Do you want to learn how to start a professional lifestyle blog that you can earn a passive income with? Well, stick around because in this video, I'm going to show you everything you need to know in order to build, grow, and monetize your very own lifestyle blog. Hey, what's up? Ben here from blogwithben.com and welcome to the lifestyle blog tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you step by step how to build, grow, and monetize your very own self hosted WordPress blog. Specifically, we'll be creating a lifestyle blog using the free WordPress theme called Bard. This is a beautiful foundation for a blog and can be used for various niches like a food blog, a travel blog, a personal finance blog, etc. The list is endless, and the free WordPress theme gives you everything you need in order to start your blog on a solid foundation. Also, by the end of the tutorial, you'll have a professional and responsive blog that can be viewed on any mobile device or desktop. Your blog will also be optimized for the search engines, allowing you to publish fresh content online and share your ideas with the world. And as an added bonus, you'll also be able to earn a passive income with your blog as well. Just last year, I was able to generate six figures with my WordPress blog, and this video will teach you how to implement the exact same revenue stream on your blog. Now, if you're new to my channel, welcome. I am so glad you found me. Here you'll find full link step-by-step -step tutorials on how to build, grow, and monetize WordPress blogs. And if you haven't done so already, I encourage you to subscribe to the Blog With Ben YouTube channel. That way you could stay up to date with all the videos that come out in the future. I also encourage you to subscribe to my mailing list, and I'll put a link to that in the video description below. That way you can gain access to my free ebook, The Blog Starter Kit. So with that being said, I am so glad you're here, but we got a lot to cover. So let's get started. In this portion of the tutorial, I'm going to show you step by step how to set up your very own self hosted WordPress blog using Bluehost Web Hosting. I personally use both of these services for the majority of my web properties. And just know that after this tutorial, you're going to have an extremely powerful digital platform that will allow you to scale and monetize your blog very quickly. And speaking of monetization, as an added bonus, you're also going to learn how to monetize your blog so that you can start earning money with your digital platform. Specifically, I'll be teaching you some of my most successful strategies that helped me earn over six figures in 2020 and 2021. And this is important because blogging has become a billion dollar industry. And the sooner you can get your foot in the door, the quicker you'll be able to start generating revenue with your blog. Now, this tutorial will be taking you through my Bluehost affiliate link. And all that means is that if you decide to make a purchase, I'll earn a commission. But by doing so, you're helping me keep my blog up and running and you're helping me provide for my family. So for that, I truly thank you. Plus, this link is an exclusive offer for WordPress users. Bluehost has partnered with WordPress. And as you'll see here in a few moments, this offer is packed with some amazing features for WordPress bloggers. It really is a phenomenal partnership that they developed. And one final note. This offer comes with a 30 day money back guarantee. So rest assured that you can get a full refund if you need to. So with that being said, let's get started. All right, the first step in this process is to sign up for web hosting. And in order for you to take advantage of Bluehost's exclusive offer for WordPress users, you have a couple options. If you're watching this video on YouTube, simply open the show notes below the video and click on my affiliate link. It'll be the first link listed there, and this will give you access to Bluehost's exclusive offer. Or if you happen to be watching this video on blogwithben.com, simply click on the resources tab in the menu at the top of the screen, and this will take you to my resources page. I list out all the tools and resources that I use on a daily basis that have helped me find success online. And whenever you have some extra time, I really encourage you to take a closer look at everything on this page. But for this tutorial, we're going to be setting up your web hosting account. So to get started, simply click on the Try Bluehost button. And again, this button is also an affiliate link. And as you can see, this is a special offer for Blog with Ben viewers. By using my affiliate link, you'll get a free domain, a free SSL certificate, an automatic WordPress install, access to Bluehost's new user dashboard, which is an amazing new feature, over $175 in free advertising offers from Google and Bing, and 24-7 technical support, all for only $2.95 per month. 
I should also mention that the $2.95 per month price is exclusively for Blog with Ben viewers. So just know that you're saving a ton of money on web hosting by using my affiliate link. Plus, because this package is optimized for WordPress, your web host servers come with proven performance, reliability, and functionality that will give your website a strong foundation for long-term success. Bluehost web hosting coupled with WordPress.org software is by far one of the strongest website platforms available. So to get started, simply click on the green Get Started Now button. And that's gonna take us to the Select Your Plan page. And as you can see, you have a few options here. The Basic, Plus, and Choice plans. Then there's even a Go Pro plan. And again, this is all personal preference and your choice really depends on how you're running your website and online business. But for this tutorial, we're gonna be using the basic plan, which allows us to host one domain. And I should also mention again that Bluehost gives us this domain for free, which is pretty cool. However, if you plan on having multiple domains and websites, then I highly recommend going with either the Plus or Choice Plus plan. These plans allow you to host unlimited websites and also come with over $200 in advertising offers from Google and Bing. Then, if you have the budget for it, I also highly recommend going with the Go Pro plan. This includes all the features in the Choice Plus plan, as well as a dedicated IP address, a high performance server, and much, much more. However, for this tutorial, we're gonna be using the basic plan. So once you've decided on what plan you're going to use, go ahead and click the green select button within that plan. And that will take us to the domain setup page where you have a couple of different options. On the left hand side of the screen is where you'll sign up if you don't have a domain name. And on the right hand side of the screen is where you'll sign up if you do have an existing domain. Now I should mention that if you're signing up with an existing domain, there are a couple of extra steps that you'll need to do in order to transfer that domain. However, for this tutorial, we'll be signing up with our brand new free domain name. So if you have an existing domain, you'll still follow along in this video, but after you're done with this tutorial, there's still a few extra steps that you'll need to do in order for your blog to be hosted with Bluehost. Luckily, I've made a separate video that walks you through that entire process. It's titled How to Point a Domain to Bluehost, and you can access it in the show notes below this video. All right, so we're going to be using our brand new free domain. So on the left-hand side of the screen under New Domain, just type in your desired domain name and click the blue Next button. And then if your domain is available, you'll get a green notification on the next screen letting you know that it is, and you can begin to create your Bluehost account. So this is the account information page and it's pretty self-explanatory, but this is where you'll enter your account, package, and credit card information. Now, if you have a Gmail or Google account, you can bypass this part and just sign in with Google. But for this tutorial, I'm gonna create a new account through Bluehost. So I'm actually gonna blur it out while I enter in my personal information, but I wanted to take a second to reiterate why Bluehost is so helpful to the WordPress community and their users. For starters, Bluehost has a 24 seven WordPress support system in place. So if you ever need any additional help or have any questions, they are there for you. They also have a one click WordPress installation feature, which we're gonna go over in a couple of minutes, but this makes getting your blog up and running a cinch. They also offer a 30 day money back guarantee, no questions asked. So if for any reason you're unsatisfied with the service, you can get your money back. And finally, Bluehost is actually recommended by WordPress. Bluehost and WordPress have worked closely together since 2005 to create a hosting platform that's ideal for running a WordPress website. So you honestly cannot go wrong. Now the next thing you're gonna select is your package information. And as you can see from the drop down menu, you have a couple of options here. One thing to keep in mind about the pricing is that the longer the subscription, the lower the monthly price. So if you opt to purchase the 36 month plan, your monthly rate will only be $2.95 per month and you'll lock in that rate for three years. However, if you purchase a shorter monthly plan, then your monthly rate will be a little higher. So for this tutorial, we're gonna be going with the 12 month plan, which is only $4.95 per month but that's still a great deal. You're getting a ton of value for less than a cup of coffee per month. Then once you've selected your plan, you have the option of adding some additional features to your plan. These are 100% optional, but I highly recommend that you at least select the domain privacy protection add-on. 
Reason being, anytime you purchase a domain, your personal information is viewable on the Who Is directory, meaning anyone can find your personal info online. However, with the domain privacy protection add-on, it will keep your personal information safe and secure and will make it undetectable in the Who Is directory. So it's totally worth the 99 cents per month, in my opinion. Now, the SiteLock security, code guard, SEO tools, and Office 365 mailbox are all optional, but for this tutorial, we're only going to add on the domain privacy protection. So you can uncheck the boxes next to the other add-ons. Now, another thing I want to point out is that Bluehost is extremely transparent with their pricing, which is why I use and recommend them. And as you can see, they display your price as you're deciding on which package to purchase. This also gives you peace of mind, and the upfront pricing assures you that there will be no surprises with your bill. All right, next, you're going to select your payment option and enter your billing information. And you can either pay by credit card or PayPal, which is pretty convenient. But one thing I should mention is that you'll be billed annually. And all this means is that you'll be billed once a year for your hosting plan. And as you can see from my Bluehost email receipt, I purchased the basic 12-month starter plan that comes with a free SSL certificate and a free domain name, but I purchased the domain privacy protection add-on, and my total cost is only $71.28 per year, which comes out to $5.94 per month. That's less than a cup of coffee per month to have your own website. And there are design companies and freelancers that charge anywhere from $400 to $10,000 to build a WordPress website. But we're doing it for less than $100. That is unreal and a huge savings. And once you've entered all the required payment information, click the small box confirming that you've read and agreed to the terms of service, cancellation policy, and acknowledge the privacy policy, and then click the green submit button. And it may take a few seconds to process, so let's give it a few moments. Then the next page is the account confirmation page showing you your receipt. And you can download the receipt here. But Bluehost also conveniently emails you all this information. And as you can see from my confirmation email, it provides all of the specifics of your hosting account. So be sure to keep an eye out for it and always keep this information in a safe and secure location. Now, the next thing you want to do is create a password for your account. So to get started, click the Create Account button. And then you'll be taken to the page where you'll manage your password. So where it says Create Password, simply enter your desired password and be sure to make it strong yet unique. And if you're having trouble coming up with a password, Bluehost has a suggest strong password feature where if you click on that, it'll auto generate a strong password for you. And then right below that, retype your new password. Now I highly recommend that you copy and paste the password in a safe and secure location like an Excel spreadsheet, separate file, or a Google Doc. It's just a good idea to always have a backup of your password. Plus you're gonna need it in a few moments to log into your new account, so keep it handy. All right, after you've created your password, you should get two green checkmark icons letting you know that the passwords match. Next, go ahead and check the small box confirming that you've read and agree to the Bluehost privacy policy in terms of service and click the Create Account button. And beautiful, your account is ready to go and it's time to log in. So click the Go to Login button. And this will take you to the Bluehost login portal. Now, anytime you want to access the back end of Bluehost and your WordPress blog, you'll do so through this portal. And to get here, simply go to bluehost.com and click on the login link at the top of the screen. And that will bring you to the login portal, which is what you're looking at right now. Now, one thing to pay attention to is to make sure that you have hosting login selected. There's an option to log into your webmail, but we haven't set that up yet. So if you're wanting to access your blog, make sure the hosting login button is selected. Then simply enter your email or domain name as the username and then enter the password that you created when you signed up with Bluehost and click the login button. And again, it may take a few seconds to load, so just sit tight real quick. And there we go.
This is the beginning of your adventure. So next, you'll be presented with Bluehost's new onboarding process. And depending on when you're watching this video, these steps may have changed, just FYI, but either way, they're pretty straightforward. Okay, so since we're starting from scratch, we'll be creating a brand new blog. However, if for any reason you have an existing site, Bluehost offers a free migration service that you can use by clicking this link. And they'll migrate your existing site to Bluehost for free. But like I said, we're starting from scratch with a brand new blog. So to begin, click the Create Your Website button. And then the first onboarding question is asking you how much help you'll need with your new blog. Thankfully, you'll be using this tutorial, so you shouldn't need any additional help, but feel free to choose the one that best suits your situation. However, for this tutorial, we're gonna skip this step. Next, Bluehost wants to know what kind of site you're creating. And we're creating a blog, so go ahead and select blog. Next, they wanna know how comfy you are with creating websites. And again, don't worry about what you put here. I'm gonna walk you through everything you need to know step by step in this video. So just put what best suits you and click the continue to theme selection button. Next, and this is a new feature, but Bluehost wants to know how you would like to build your blog. Do you wanna use WordPress or their new Bluehost website builder? And again, I'm walking you through everything you need to know and we'll be using WordPress in this tutorial. So go ahead and click the get started button within the WordPress section. Next question is what type of site you're creating? In this video, we're creating a lifestyle blog. So I'd select lifestyle from this list. However, the footage that you're watching right now is from my food blog tutorial. So that's why I'm selecting food and drinks. Either way, it doesn't really matter what you select here because we're gonna be configuring our blog from scratch after we install WordPress. Then who are you creating a site for? And for this video, I'm assuming you're creating the blog for yourself, so select myself. And click the continue button. Next, Bluehost has a few more questions and will ask you to create your site title and tagline. And your site title and tagline are used in a few different places on your blog, one being in the tab of the browser. And this helps the reader distinguish which tab is what and it creates a good user experience. Next, it's used in the search engine snippets for your search results. This is important when it comes to SEO and it also creates a good user experience. So, Bluehost has conveniently taken care of this step by making it a part of the onboarding process. You used to have to change the title and tagline in the back end of WordPress, but now where it says, what do you wanna name your site? Go ahead and enter the name of your blog. And again, this portion of the Bluehost signup footage is from my food blog tutorial, and that's so I didn't have to reshoot this section of the video. So the site title and tagline will be food related, but I recommend naming your site something that coincides with your blog's content. Then directly below that, just add a catchy tagline. There we go. And click the continue button. Next, you'll be presented with some WordPress themes that you could choose from. But go ahead and click the skip this step link since we'll be installing our own theme a little later on in the video. And then that will start the WordPress installation process, which usually takes a few seconds. And congratulations, you're in. What you're looking at right now is Bluehost's new user experience. This is what you'll see every time you log into your account, and Bluehost has really streamlined the entire onboarding WordPress experience, making things easy to find and understand for anyone who is new to managing a blog. Take a look at this. There are companies out there that are charging nearly $300 per month. That's almost $4,000 per year to do what I'm going to teach you in this very video. Again, this is one of the many reasons why I love the partnership that Bluehost and WordPress have created, and it's also why I'm a huge fan of their new backend interface. And speaking of the new interface, this is what you'll see every time you log in, and this is also how you'll access your WordPress blog, which has automatically been installed. Now, the first thing I wanna address is the domain. You're probably wondering why it's looking all weird and funky. Well, that's because this is a temporary domain. 
I should also point out that if you're not seeing this temporary domain in your Bluehost customer portal, no worries, sometimes they show it here, sometimes they don't. Either way, in order for your new domain to display correctly, you'll need to verify your email address and activate your domain. And Bluehost makes this process super simple by sending you an email where all you have to do is click a button. However, please be aware that you'll only have to do this if you registered your domain with Bluehost. If you registered your domain with a service like GoDaddy, then you'll need to follow a few additional steps in order for your domain to work with Bluehost. Again, luckily I've created a video that walks you through that process and the link is in the show notes of this tutorial titled Point Domain to Bluehost. Anyways, keep your eye out for this email from Bluehost. You'll need to verify your email with Bluehost within 14 days or your domain will be deactivated. So I'm going to click the verify your email button And as you can see, the email has been verified with the Whois directory, and your new domain should show up in about 24 to 48 hours. And if you revisit your Bluehost customer portal, you'll be able to see that new domain here. And again, this should show up in about 24 to 48 hours. Okay, another thing I wanna point out before we get started is Bluehost's list to launch. And I can appreciate what they're trying to do here. Essentially, they're trying to streamline the blog setup process by presenting you with a checklist of tasks. And this is where you can complete each task before you launch your blog. However, my only issue with this is that there isn't really any context and the list can seem a little overwhelming to someone who is just starting out. And that's why I recommend that you don't really worry about it and just follow my steps in this video. I can assure you that by the end of this tutorial, you'll have a beautiful, professional, and secure WordPress blog. All right, with that being said, let's start building your blog. So like I previously mentioned, one of the many reasons why I use and recommend Bluehost is that they streamline your blog setup process and automatically install WordPress for you. So to get started with WordPress and access the back end of your blog, click the Log into WordPress button on the upper right hand side of the screen. And once again, it may take a few seconds to load, so let's just sit tight real quick. Almost there. And congratulations, you're in. You now have one of the most powerful and robust blogging platforms available. And what you're looking at is the back end of WordPress, and this is where the magic happens. This is where you'll make most of your changes, and it's where your blogging journey begins. Now, before we start making changes, I want to give you a quick tour of your dashboards. And again, depending on when you're viewing this video, some things may have changed, but as of 2022, when you log into WordPress through Bluehost, it will automatically take you to your Bluehost dashboard within your WordPress dashboard. I know it can seem confusing at first, but once you get familiar with where everything is, it will become second nature to you. Okay, so first things first, the back end of WordPress is pretty basic, but that's great because it makes it easy to learn and get around. For example, you'll always be able to tell that you're logged into WordPress if you could see this toolbar and sidebar menu items. And we'll be using these a lot, so don't worry, you're gonna get very familiar with them a little later on in the video. Then towards the center of the screen will be your dashboards, or blog, depending on what you have selected. And we're currently at our Bluehost dashboard, so that's what you should be seeing here. But like I said earlier, when you initially log into WordPress through Bluehost, it will take you to your Bluehost dashboard within WordPress, but you can always access it by hovering your mouse over Bluehost and clicking on Home. Now, we honestly won't be spending too much time here at the Bluehost dashboard, but I can appreciate what Bluehost is trying to do with this dashboard, so let me give you a quick tour of it. So as you can see, they have a navigation menu where you could check out things like themes, plugins, additional services, staging site, settings, and help. But again, I'm going to be walking you through everything you need to know, so we won't be using this dashboard too much. Now, if you need to get back to your Bluehost account for any reason, you can do so here. And if you find that you want some full service help from Bluehost, you can learn more about that here. But this is a paid service, just FYI. You can also get some additional help here as well and get back to your Bluehost account by clicking on that little astronaut icon. And once again, Bluehost has listed out some steps to help you build your site. And it's a good point of reference, but like I said, we're not gonna be using it in this video. 
Okay, so that's the Bluehost dashboard in a nutshell. Next, let's take a look at your WordPress dashboard. So within the sidebar, hover your mouse over Dashboard and click on Home. And this will take you to your actual WordPress dashboard. And just like before, you have your toolbar and sidebar menu items. And since we have the WordPress dashboard selected, this is what you'll see here. I like to think of this as home base for building your blog because along with your customization menu, which we'll cover in a few moments, this is where we'll be making most of our changes. All right, awesome work so far. You should be proud and pumped that your blog is built on such a strong foundation. Moving on, next, let's make some adjustments to your blog so that you can set yourself up for success. All right, in this portion of the tutorial, we're going to actually learn our way around the WordPress dashboard and set up a strong foundation before we start putting content online. It's easy to get excited once you finally get set up, but a lot of people jump the gun and start publishing content without getting their digital foundation set up properly. That's why I always do and recommend these five things before I start any type of blog. It's extremely important that we set ourselves up for success before we publish our first blog post. So with that being said, let's make some important adjustments to our WordPress settings that will set a strong foundation for our blog. And the first thing we're going to do is reconfigure the permalink settings. One thing I want to point out before we get started is that for the WordPress setup portion of this tutorial, you may see me using previous footage from my how to start a food blog tutorial. So if you see the site title kale and croutons, or if I happen to refer to a food blog, it's because I'm reusing footage from another video. But the reason I'm doing that is because I don't wanna to have to spend hours recording a video if the steps are going to be the exact same regardless of what type of blog you're creating. So just know that the steps to set up your blog will be the same whether you're starting a food blog or a personal finance blog or a health and fitness blog, etc. These steps will be the exact same. Another thing I wanna go over is how to use my Google Docs in this tutorial. So throughout this video, you may hear me say that I've linked to something in the video description below. Well, what I've done is I've created two Google Docs that contain various links to important resources that I mentioned throughout the tutorial. And in order to access them, simply open the video description by clicking the show more link at the bottom of the video. Then once opened, scroll down a bit until you see the important links for this video and recommended plugins links. And clicking on those links will take you to the Google Docs that I've created that have various links that you'll need throughout the tutorial. And as you can see, clicking on the important links link takes you to a Google Doc that has the code cheat sheet along with various other helpful resources that I mentioned throughout the tutorial. Again, the same thing goes for the recommended plugins doc. Simply click on that link and you'll have access to all the recommended plugins that we use throughout this video. As always, if you have any trouble accessing these links or have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out in the comments below and I'll do everything I can to help you out. All right, with that being said, let's set up your blog. So the first thing I wanna go over are permalinks. Now, if you're brand new to blogging, you're probably unfamiliar with what a permalink is. So let me give you a quick rundown of what permalinks are and why they're important. By definition, a permalink is a static hyperlink to a particular web page or blog post. All it really is, though, is it's the URL of the content that you're publishing on your WordPress blog. These are the links that you're going to be sharing with the world whenever you want to share your content online. And these are also the URLs that people will enter into their browsers whenever they want to view one of your pages. That's why it's very important for these links to be set up properly. Now, the WordPress default permalink settings look like this. This is not very user friendly as it includes a question mark in the page or post number within the URL. And I recommend removing that so that your links are clean and optimized for the search engines. And the best way to do that is to have a URL structure that contains keywords only. And I'll show you how to do that right now. So in order to change the permalink settings, simply hover your mouse over settings on the left hand side of the screen and click on permalinks. And this will bring you to the permalink settings menu. And as you can see, WordPress offers you the ability to create a custom URL structure for your permalink. 
Now, the permalink setting I highly recommend you use is post name. This generates a short, memorable, and SEO friendly URL that's based off of the title of each of your blog posts. For example, if your blog post is called 10 Quick and Easy Recipes, the URL for that post will be bensdemoblog.com 10 Quick and Easy Recipes. That's much better than the default setting that WordPress starts you out with. So to change the permalink settings, simply click on the post name circle. There we go. And then at the bottom of the screen, click the Save Changes button. And the permalink structure has been updated, as you can see from the notification at the top of the screen. And then let's take a quick look at the change we made so that you can see what your permalinks will look like from here on out. So WordPress always starts you off with the sample post. So let's visit that post really quick. And you can see that the post title, Hello World, is now in the permalink structure. Again, this creates a better user experience for your audience and also bodes well for your SEO. All right, now that we've set up our permalink structure, let's move on to tip number two, which is to update your Gravatar. All right, so if you're new to Gravatars, let me break it down for you. Your Gravatar is a globally recognized avatar. It's basically an image that follows you from site to site, appearing beside your name whenever you do things like comment or post on a blog. Even if you turned your comments off, it's always a good idea to have a Gravatar to enhance your online presence and increase your brand recognition. Here is a quick example of my Gravatar. As you can see, the Gravatar displays my image next to my comment. And simply put, Gravatars help identify your comments on blogs and web forums. Here's how it works. Basically, all you do is you upload an image and create your profile just once. And then whenever you participate in any Gravatar-enabled site, your Gravatar image will automatically follow you there. It's a free service for site owners, developers, and users, and it's automatically included in every WordPress account. Now, to see if you already have a Gravatar, within your WordPress dashboard, hover your mouse over Users on the left-hand side of the screen and click on Profile. And this brings you to the User Profile Settings. Then scroll down to where it says Profile Picture. And if your actual picture is showing, then you have a Gravatar. But chances are that you don't and you're just seeing a silhouette, especially if this is your first WordPress blog. But setting up Gravatars in your site is very easy to do. You sign up once, upload a picture, and anytime you comment on any Gravatar-supported blog or website, your Gravatar comes along for the ride. So to get started, head over to Gravatar.com. You can just go ahead and click on that Gravatar link, and that should take you to the Gravatar homepage. Then to get started, click on the Create Your Gravatar button. And one thing I want to point out is that you'll need to sign up for a free WordPress.com account. And without getting into the weeds, WordPress.com is completely separate from WordPress.org, which is what your food blog will be. However, you'll still need a WordPress.com account in order to create your Gravatar. Again, don't worry, it's free. And this is the only time we'll be using WordPress.com. So, simply follow the steps to create your free WordPress.com account. So go ahead and enter the email address you want to associate with this account and choose a username and password and then click the create your account button. And in a few short moments, you'll be prompted to sign into WordPress.com. So go ahead and click the sign in with WordPress.com button. Next, you'll need to confirm your email address. So head over to your email and you should see an email from wordpress.com. Go ahead and open it and click the activate account button. And in a few short seconds, your email will be confirmed and you'll be taken to your wordpress.com dashboard, which looks very similar to your wordpress.org dashboard, but this is where we'll create our Gravatar. And I know that all these accounts and dashboards can be somewhat overwhelming, but this is the only time we're gonna be using the WordPress.com platform. Everything else we do in this video will be through our lifestyle blog and Bluehost. Okay, so to create your Gravatar, in the upper right-hand side of the screen, click on the little gray avatar. And this will open your Gravatar profile. 
where configuring it should be somewhat straightforward. So first things first, go ahead and enter your first and last name here, followed by what you want your Gravatar's display name to be, as well as a little bit about yourself. Then go ahead and click the Save Profile Details button. And you should get a notification letting you know that the settings have been saved. And next, it's time to upload your Gravatar photo. So click the Click to Change Photo icon and upload the photo you want to use. I'm using a simple headshot, but it can basically be anything you want. Just try to keep it around 300 by 300 pixels in size. And remember that this photo will be used next to the comments you leave online. So I recommend using a somewhat professional image. Okay, next you have the option of cropping the photo after it's been uploaded, but I like it as is. So click the change my photo button. And your new Gravatar photo is good to go and your profile has been successfully updated. Finally, I recommend linking your new blog to your Gravatar profile. So under the profile links, click the add icon and select add URL from that pop-up menu. Then enter the URL of your blog, followed by a brief description of your site. And when entering the URL of your site, I recommend putting the full URL and domain. So I'm using the HTTPS prefix and then bensdemoblog.com. And then below that, a brief description. And once again, I'm reusing footage for this portion of the tutorial from one of my finance blog tutorials. So that's why I'm saying finance blog here, but you'll obviously wanna give a description that represents your lifestyle blog. And then finally, click the add site button. And in a few seconds, your site will be successfully linked to your Gravatar profile. Then if you wanna see your Gravatar profile, simply click on the Gravatar profile link and you'll be taken to your new Gravatar profile. Now, I know it doesn't look like much, but your Gravatar is a great way to promote your blog and brand online. And when you're interacting online, your Gravatar will follow you, and it's a great way to engage while also linking out to your new blog. Additionally, if we head back to our WordPress.org blog, remember not WordPress.com, but our Bluehost and WordPress.org blog, and hover your mouse over Users and click on Profile, Under the About Yourself section, you should see your new Gravatar image being used as your profile picture. Now, if you don't see it, no worries. It usually takes about 24 to maybe 48 hours to show up, but either way, you now have a professional Gravatar profile ready for the world. However, I do highly recommend that you update your bio here within this box, and it could just be a few quick sentences highlighting who you are and what your blog is about, but this bio is what's going to be used whenever you author a blog post. Then after you've updated the bio, scroll down towards the bottom of the page and click the Update Profile button. And your profile has now been updated, your Gravatar is ready to go, and moving on to the display name. All right, next, we're gonna change how your name is displayed on your site. And what I mean by this is that whenever you first installed WordPress, Bluehost automatically created your profile's username using the email address that you signed up with. This username is also used for your display name, which is the name that's shown whenever you author a blog post. And using your default username as your display name isn't very professional, and it kind of looks like you don't know what you're doing to your audience. So let's fix that. Okay, in order to change the display name, Simply hover your mouse over Users on the left-hand side of the screen and click on Profile if you haven't done so already. And this will bring you to your Profile Settings page where you have the ability to customize certain aspects of your profile, one of them being how your name is publicly displayed. And there are two things I always change. First, I change the nickname and then the display name. So if you scroll down to the Name section and on the left-hand side of the screen next to where it says Nickname, I'm going to enter the name that I want to use for my display name. And remember, this is going to be used for the byline of all your blog posts. So try to keep it professional. And then directly below that, where it says display name publicly as, 
simply select the nickname that you just created from the drop down menu. Then scroll down to the bottom of the screen and click the Update Profile button. And after a few short seconds, your profile will update and your new display name will be used from here on out. And as I previously mentioned, this display name will also be used every time you author a blog post and will look much more professional than your email address. All right, next we want to delete some of the plugins that come pre-installed with your WordPress blog. Now, that's not to say that the pre-installed plugins aren't useful, but for the purpose of this video, these plugins will just take up valuable space that could be better utilized for other aspects of your blog. So, on the left-hand side of your screen in the dashboard, hover your mouse over Plugins and click on Installed Plugins. And this will bring you to your Plugin Manager. This is where you can add, delete, and deactivate plugins on your WordPress blog. Now, like I previously mentioned, WordPress starts you off with some unnecessary plugins that we're not going to be using for this tutorial. So to get rid of these plugins and free up some space, the first thing you need to do is deactivate the active plugins that you want to get rid of by checking the box next to them. Now, I should point out that depending on when you're viewing this video, some of the plugins that come pre-installed may have changed meaning there may be different plugins from what you're seeing in this video. So if you don't see some of these plugins that are pre-installed, no worries. Or if you have different ones that are currently installed, it's all good. What really matters are the recommended plugins that we're going to install in a few moments. But it's always a good idea to clean up your plugins and remove the ones that you're not going to use. So for this example, we're going to deactivate Creative Mail by Constant Contact, Google Analytics for WordPress by Monster Insights, Jetpack, and Opt-in Monster. Then once you've selected the plugins you want to deactivate, click on the Bulk Actions drop-down and select Deactivate from that menu. Then press the Apply button, and you'll get a notification once those plugins have been successfully deactivated. Then, to completely remove the plugins, check the boxes next to the plugins that you deactivated, along with the others that we're not going to use. And for this video, we'll be getting rid of the Akismet Anti Spam plugin, Creative Mail, Monster Insights, Hello Dolly, Jetpack, and Opt in Monster. Then, towards the top of the screen, click on the Bulk Actions drop down menu again and select Delete. Then click the Apply button, and you may get a final notice asking you if you're sure you want to delete them. Go ahead and click OK, and our plugins will disappear one by one. Perfect. All right, next we're going to install the recommended plugins. Now, as you can see, I'm keeping a few of the pre-installed plugins. Specifically, we're starting out with the Bluehost plugin, WP Forms Lite, and Yoast SEO. Now, the Bluehost plugin will always come with WordPress if you're using Bluehost web hosting. However, if you're not seeing WP Forms or the Yoast SEO plugins here, then you'll need to install and activate them during this portion of the video. Now, like I said in the intro, I always try to stay away from adding too many plugins to my blogs, but there are a few plugins that I always recommend adding when starting a blog. Now, if you're new to the idea of plugins, WordPress plugins are bits of software that could be uploaded to your blog, and their purpose is to extend and expand the functionality of your WordPress site. And there are literally thousands of plugins to choose from, but to help you along in the process, I've created a Google Doc that lists out and links to each plugin that's recommended for starting a WordPress blog. You can also access this Google Doc in the show notes below the video titled Recommended Plugins, and that way you can always come back to the video and easily access the plugins. Now, we're only going to be adding a handful of additional plugins. Like I said, I try to limit the number of plugins I use on my blog because the more plugins you have, the more data you're using, and it also opens you up to the possibility that some plugins may not play nice with one another, and that could potentially break your site. However, the following plugins are essential to running a fast and secure blog and have been tested and all work seamlessly with one another. I should also mention that all of these plugins are free and will help you become a better blogger. All right, so to start adding plugins, go to the plugin management menu if you're not there already by clicking on plugins in the WordPress dashboard. 
Then within the plugin management page, to add a new plugin, we're going to want to click on the add new button at the top of the screen. And this will bring you to where you can search through the available plugins. Now, if you look towards the top of the screen, you can see that you have the option of filtering your search by featured, popular, recommended, favorites, and premium. If you have some extra time, I recommend browsing through the different plugins to get a better idea of what's available. But for this tutorial, we already know the plugins that we want to install. So towards the upper right hand side of the screen where it says search plugins, let's type in the name of the first plugin we're going to install. And before you start typing, make sure that keyword is selected from the drop down. This ensures that our search results are accurate. All right, so the first plugin we're going to install and activate is the Titan anti-spam plugin. So in that search field there, type Titan anti-spam. And once the search results populate, it should be the very first plugin listed. And this is actually my replacement for the Akismet plugin because the Akismet plugin started charging you $5 per month if you ran ads or promoted things on your blog. However, the Titan anti-spam plugin does the same thing and the free version will still protect the comments on your blog from spammers. So let's go ahead and install it. So click the install now button. And then activate it by clicking the activate button. There we go. And then this particular plugin will take you to their settings page, but we're not going to configure it just yet. We'll do that a little later on in the tutorial. So let's add our next plugin by hovering your mouse over plugins and click on add new. Then this time in the search field, type WDV about me. And this plugin is gonna give us the ability to create a professional looking about me section within the sidebar of your blog. Now, in my previous How to Start a Lifestyle blog tutorial, I used the custom HTML widget for the About Me sidebar section, which was kind of advanced for a brand new blogger, and I ended up getting a lot of questions about it. So that's why I've decided to use the WDV About Me plugin instead. It streamlines the process and allows you to quickly create a professional looking About Me bio that can be displayed within the sidebar of your blog. So let's go ahead and install and activate the plugin by clicking the Install Now button. And then once again, click the activate button. And as you can see, the plugin has been activated and added to our list of plugins. All right, moving on, let's add our next plugin. So go ahead and click the add new button at the top of the screen. And this time in the search field, type simple social. And the plugin we want is called Simple Social Media Share Buttons Social Sharing for Everyone. That's a mouthful. But this plugin is going to allow us to add social media share buttons on our blog and blog posts. And having these social buttons on your blog posts is not only a best practice, but it's a great way to expand your blog's reach and get in front of new audiences. So let's go ahead and install this plugin by clicking the Install Now button. and then click the activate button and there we go plugin has been activated and added to our list all right let's keep going let's add our next plugin so go ahead and click the add new button at the top of the screen and then within the search field type smush spelled s-m-u-s-h and we want the Smush Lazy Load Images Optimize and Compress Images plugin. Again, that is a mouthful for a title, but this plugin does exactly what it says in the title. It will automatically compress images that are uploaded to your blog. Now, one thing I want to point out is that it will slightly decrease the quality of some of the images. Now, it's not that noticeable in my opinion, and I use this plugin on all of my blogs, but if you notice a difference and you're not happy with it, you can easily deactivate the plugin after you've tested it. However, it does optimize your site to help it load faster, which is good for your blog's user experience, and it has a positive metric for SEO. Either way, for this tutorial, I'm installing and activating the plugin. So go ahead and click the Install and Activate buttons. And there we go, plugin has been added and activated. All right, let's add our next plugin. So go ahead and click the Add New button at the top of the screen. 
and this time search for child theme wizard. And this plugin is going to let you create a child theme. If you're new to the child theme concept and you're scratching your head right now, no worries. I'm going to cover and explain it in greater detail a little later on. But having a child theme is something I highly, highly recommend. So for now, let's install the plugin. So click the Install Now button. And then activate it by clicking the Activate button. Perfect. And moving right along, let's add our next plugin. So once again, click the Add New button. And this time search for Cookie. And the plugin is called Cookie Yes. Now, if you're unfamiliar with what GDPR is, it's basically a new European law stating that if you have web traffic coming to your site, from the European Union and you're collecting their data like their email address, their IP address and so on, then you need to disclose to the visitor any data collection you may be doing. And I realize data collection sounds kind of scary, but the majority of sites on the internet do it. And if you're going to have traffic to your blog from the EU, then I recommend you add this GDPR cookie compliance plugin. It's free and will help your blog stay GDPR compliant. So go ahead and follow the same steps to install and activate the plugin. And moving right along. Looks good. Let's add our next plugin. So once again, click the Add New button. And this time, search for Instagram Feed. And the plugin we want is called Smash Balloon Social Photo Feed. And this plugin is going to give us the ability to add responsive Instagram feeds for multiple accounts on our blog. Specifically, we're going to be adding a full width feed across the footer of our blog. So let's go ahead and install this by clicking the Install Now button. And then click the Activate button. And the plugin has been added. All right, moving on, let's add our next plugin. So once again, click the Add New button at the top of the screen. And this time, search for Recent Posts with Thumbnails. And this plugin is going to let you list your most recent posts with titles, thumbnails, author info, etc. And it's a great tool that will allow you to show off your posts in the sidebar and footer of your blog super easy to use and it lets you display your content in some cool and unique ways. So go ahead and install and activate this plugin by clicking the install now button and then the activate button and there we go. All right moving on to our final plugin. So go ahead and click the add new button at the top of the screen. And then instead of searching for this plugin, it should be on the very first page of the plugin list titled Classic Widgets. However, if you're not seeing it, feel free to search for it in the search field. So this plugin enables the previous Classic Widget setting screen in the customization menu. And I know that may sound like a foreign language to you right now, but we're going to cover that in a few moments in this video. But Due to some recent WordPress updates, I've decided to install this plugin so that you can have the classic widget editing experience when making changes to your site. And in my opinion, the classic widget version is much better than what they have now. No offense to WordPress, but that's just how I feel. So let's go ahead and install and activate this plugin. And then one thing I will say about this plugin is that if for any reason you don't like it and you want to try the new experience, you could always deactivate it and uninstall it. All right, so you've now installed and activated all of the essential plugins that you're going to be using on your site. Next, let's configure the plugins so that you'll get the most out of them as you're building your blog and creating content for your audience. Okay, the first plugin we're going to configure is the Cookie Yes GDPR Cookie Consent plugin. And before we dive in, a quick disclaimer. I'm not a lawyer, and the information provided in this video does not and is not intended to constitute legal advice. 
Instead, all information, content, and materials available in this video and my blog are for general informational purposes only. If you have any legal concerns regarding your website and compliance, then I highly recommend you reach out to an attorney to obtain advice with respect to any particular legal matter. Okay, now that that's out of the way, in this section of the tutorial, we're gonna configure the Cookie Yes GDPR compliance plugin so that you're notifying your visitors about your cookie policy. And if we fast forward to our finished blog, you can see that plugin in action. So this will give your site's visitors the option to accept or change their cookie settings. Additionally, we're also going to change the colors of the plugin so that it matches the color scheme of your website. Okay, first things first, let's access the plugin settings. So back at the WordPress dashboard, hover your mouse over GDPR cookie consent and click on settings. And this will bring you to the settings page where you can configure the plugin. Now, one of the reasons I really love this plugin is because it comes enabled and ready to use out of the box. There's not much that we have to do in order for it to work properly. However, there are a few things I wanna show you before you start using it. First, if you take a look under the general tab, next to the select the type of law section, you'll notice that there are three separate types of compliance options. There's GDPR, CCPA, and CCPA and GDPR together. And without getting into the weeds, GDR compliance is used if some of your blog's audience is from the European Union. CCPA compliance is used if some of your audience will be from California. And then CCPA and GDPR together is obviously for audiences that come from the European Union and California. Bottom line, if you think that you're going to have people from the EU and California visit your blog, then select CCPA and GDPR. Next, under the CCPA settings, we're gonna turn on the show CCPA notice. This displays CCPA notice on the consent bar of your site and records prior consent from the user. Moving on to the customized cookie bar settings. Here you can edit things like the message heading, the message itself, the cookie bar color, the text color, font, and so on. However, for this example, I'm leaving everything as is. Next, you can customize the button the user clicks on within the consent bar. Simply open the customized button tab. And here you'll have the ability to customize the various buttons of the plugin. For example, you can customize the colors and styles or show it as a link or button within the consent bar. And without getting into the weeds, I'm not a lawyer, obviously, and this shouldn't be taken as legal advice, but in this example, whenever the user clicks on the button within the consent plugin, that's going to notify me that they accept all tracking cookies being used on the site. And by default, the color of the accept all button is green, but you can easily change it by clicking the select color button here. And then you can enter the hex color code of the color if you know it, or you can use the color picker to choose the new button color. And that's what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna go with black. There we go. And that's gonna do it for all the configuring we're gonna do for these settings. So once you're done making your changes, click the update settings button, and you should get a notification letting you know that the settings have been saved and updated. Then let's take a look at the plugin really quick. So let's visit our site by hovering your mouse over site title in the upper left hand side of the screen and click on visit site. And you can see that the cookie notice banner is displaying on your blog. Now we obviously have some work to do on building our blog, but this gives it a much more professional look and feel and helps to ensure that you're remaining compliant with the new GDPR law. Now, one thing I wanna point out before we move on is that if you click on the cookie settings button, you'll see that the save and accept button is still green. Now, I couldn't find a way to change that within the free version of the plugin, but thankfully we can change the color with a little CSS magic. And I'll show you how to change that a little later on in the video when we configure the color scheme of the blog. It's super easy to do, and I'll walk you through the steps step by step. But first, let's head back to our WordPress dashboard and configure our next plugin. So in the upper left-hand side of the screen, hover your mouse over your site title and click on dashboard. And once again, just a quick tip, if you're having trouble finding information about a particular plugin, one quick workaround is to simply go to your plugin management menu. 
So on the left-hand side of the screen, if you hover your mouse over plugins and click on installed plugins, that will take you to your plugin management page where you can typically find the settings of most of your plugins. And once again, we're gonna be configuring the Smush plugin, so simply click on the settings link underneath that plugin. And then the Smush plugin has some automatic onboarding steps. This is great because it'll let you start choosing how you wanna use the plugin and then allows Smush to do all of the heavy lifting. So to get started, click the Begin Setup button. And the first setting is automatic compression. And this is the main reason we're installing this plugin so that whenever you upload images to your blog, Smush will automatically optimize and compress those images so you don't have to do it manually. And this ultimately speeds up your site. So go ahead and make sure that the switch is turned on and click the next button. Next, they wanna know if you want to strip the image metadata. And no, this is not stripping the SEO metadata, just the image metadata. So I recommend keeping this turned on and click the next button. Next is lazy load. And this feature stops off screen images from loading until the visitor scrolls to that image. And this helps with site speed as well and makes your pages load faster. Now real quick, I should point out that I have seen the lazy load feature cause some issues with blogs images in the past. It's not a huge deal, but if you see that your images aren't loading, it could be because of this feature. And if that's the case, you can easily turn this feature off in the plugin settings. And I'll show you how to do that in a few moments. However, for this portion of the tutorial, we're gonna keep this enabled and click the next button. And finally, the plugin wants to know if they can track your usage data. I'm going to keep this turned off, but you can turn it on if you want and click the finish setup wizard button. And we're good to go. Now we obviously don't have any images uploaded to our site just yet, but as we start uploading images, the Smush plugin will automatically compress those images, helping our site speed and allowing your blog's pages to load faster. Now you can also manually upload images through the plugin, but this plugin should automatically compress images as we upload them to our media library. Then before we move on, let me show you how to turn off the lazy load feature. Again, if you're seeing issues with your images loading after configuring this plugin, it may be due to the lazy load feature. This isn't a common problem, but I just want you to be aware of it and how to fix it if you come across it. So to deactivate the lazy load feature under the smush settings on the left-hand side of the screen within your WordPress dashboard, click on lazy load. And this will bring you to the lazy load settings page. This is where you can get really specific in terms of how the feature works, but if you wanna just deactivate it altogether, Simply scroll down to the bottom of the page and click the deactivate button. Then don't forget to save your changes and the lazy load feature will be turned off. Again, this is just a quick tip to help troubleshoot if you're seeing that your images aren't loading on your site. Okay, moving on to the next plugin, the Titan Anti-Spam Plugin. So within your WordPress dashboard, on the left-hand side of the screen, click on where it says Titan Anti-Spam to access the settings. And this will bring you to the plugins settings page, which looks a little overwhelming because there is a lot going on. However, we're only gonna be making a few small changes. Also, the good news is that the plugin is already automatically blocking spam from your comments. So you don't have to do anything there. However, there are a few small security tweaks I recommend making. So go ahead and click on the Tweaks tab. And the first change we're making is under the Base Settings section. So go ahead and turn the Hide Author Login on, as well as the Hide Errors when logging in. Turning these features on will help guard you from bad actors and hackers trying to access your WordPress login credentials. And yes, unfortunately, they are out there. Then below that, within the hide WordPress versions, go ahead and turn on those three recommended features. Remove metadata generator, remove version from script, and remove version from style sheet. Turning these on will make it more difficult for people to hack your blog as well. Then once you've made all your changes, Go ahead and click the save button on the upper right hand side of the screen and you should get a notification letting you know that the settings have been updated successfully. Okay, moving on to the last plugin we're going to configure within this section of the tutorial. 
So let's head back to our plugin management menu by hovering your mouse over plugins and clicking on installed plugins. Then find the Yoast SEO plugin and click on the settings link. Okay, so what you're looking at right now is the Yoast SEO general settings page. And as of December 1st, 2021, Yoast implemented an update to the plugin that totally changed how you configure it. What used to be their configuration wizard is now called the configuration workout. And as you'll see in a few moments, they've basically simplified the configuration process and removed a handful of steps. I'm actually a fan of it and I'm glad they did it because it will save you some time and help you get your blog up and running a lot faster. So without further ado, let's configure the plugin. So towards the top of the screen, click the link that says Yoast SEO Configuration Workout. And this will bring you to the workout page where you have a few options. We're using the free version of the plugin, so the first option is all that will be available. However, if you purchase the premium version of the plugin, you'll have a few additional workouts available. Either way, the free version is more than enough to help you get started and optimize your site for the search engines. So, to get started, click the Start Workout button. All right, as I mentioned earlier, Yoast has simplified this process into five steps. And the first step in the configuration process is to optimize your SEO data. This will let the plugin see your site as Google does, and it helps Yoast give you tips on how to improve technical issues while all running in the background. Now by default, it may already be done for you. As you can see, the SEO data optimization has already been complete here. However, if it hasn't been done, there will be a button for you to click within the first section. So go ahead and click that and let the plugin do its thing. However, it's already been done for us, so if that's the case, you can move on to the next step and click the continue button. Next, Yoast wants to help you better represent your site on the search engines. This will help to increase the chance that your blog gets featured in a Google Knowledge Panel. Again, this is just one of those things that can help you leverage SEO to drive traffic to your blog. So, the first question is asking you if you're an organization or a person. Now, if you're running a blog like I am in this video, you'll want to switch this to person. So, from that drop down, just select person. Then below that, you'll be asked to select the name of the user associated with your site. So, within that drop down, select your user profile. Next is the person logo or avatar. This is like a featured image that will be used within the search results. Now, we're actually gonna skip this for now and come back to it when we create our featured image for the homepage, but we'll wanna update this before we launch your blog. Finally, we have the site tagline. And by default, it's using the tagline that we created at the beginning of the tutorial during the Bluehost setup. But you can change what displays in the Google Knowledge panel here if you'd like. All right, moving on, so go ahead and click the Save and Continue button and you may get a notification telling you that you need to add an image. No worries, we're gonna do that a little later on in the tutorial. So go ahead and click the Save and Continue button to move on. Next are the social profiles, and this will help the search engine bots know what social networks your blog is associated with. Again, this is important because the search engines crawl your site and see that you're connected to multiple popular social networks with followings. It can give you more authority and help to boost your search engine ranking. So to let the search engines know your social profiles, you'll need to update your user profile within WordPress. And this can actually be handled in your WordPress dashboard. So we'll address this a little later on in a few minutes after we're done configuring the Yoast SEO plugin. So go ahead and click the continue button And moving on to the final two steps of the configuration workout. So step number four is Yoast asking you for permission to collect certain anonymous information about your site and how you use it. So go ahead and say yes or no here and click the save and continue button. And finally, they're asking you to sign up to their newsletter. I actually recommend doing this. They have a ton of helpful content that they send to their subscribers to help you improve your blog's SEO. So sign up here if you'd like. And then that's pretty much it for the configuration workout. So go ahead and click the finish this workout button. And you should get a notification letting you know that you've successfully configured the plugin. Now, like I previously mentioned, we will come back to this configuration workout and update that image within step number two. 
but we also still need to update your social profiles within your WordPress user profile. This will help the search engine bots know what social networks your blog is associated with. Again, this is important because when the search engines crawl your site and see that you're connected to multiple popular social networks with followings, it can give you more authority and help to boost your search engine ranking. So first things first, hover your mouse over users and click on profile. Then scroll down to the contact info section and all you're gonna do is enter the URL of your site in the website field, followed by all of the social networks that you're associated with. Simply enter the URLs of each one in the fields provided. Then once you're done, don't forget to save your changes, so scroll down to the bottom of the screen and click the Update Profile button. And we're all set. You've successfully configured the Yoast SEO plugin. All right, moving on. Next, it's time to install our WordPress theme. All right, in this section of the tutorial, we're going to go over how to install a free WordPress theme to your blog. And the right WordPress theme can go a long way in your blog's success, and this portion of the video will show you how to turn a boring layout into a sleek, innovative, and mobile responsive design. And for this video, we're gonna be installing the free WordPress theme called Bard. And I just wanna reiterate that we will be using and installing the free version of this theme, which is great to get started with. However, there is a premium version of this theme that costs $29, but you get access to more design features and configurations. And if you're interested in that, I have an affiliate link to the premium version of the Bard WordPress theme that I've listed below in the video description within the important link stock. So if you want to check out the premium version of this theme, just visit my affiliate link. All right, with that being said, let's install our free WordPress theme. So the first thing you want to do is hover your mouse over appearance within your WordPress dashboard and click on themes. And this will bring you to your theme management menu. This is where you can add new themes, change your current theme, and search for additional themes all from this menu. Now, we're gonna be adding a new theme, so to get started, simply click on the Add New Theme icon. And this is gonna bring you to the WordPress theme directory. And basically, this is where you can browse through the thousands of different themes that WordPress has to offer. However, we already know the theme that we're going to use. So in the upper right-hand side of the screen, you'll see a search field there. Simply type in the word Bard, spelled B-A-R-D, and that will bring up the search results and it should be the first one there. Now, you do have the ability to check out a demo of this theme by hovering your mouse over that snapshot and clicking on the details and preview. And it's obviously a basic demo, but it gives you a good preview of how the theme behaves. Also, if you look in the upper left-hand side of the screen, you'll get a brief description of the theme along with the user ratings. And as you can see, the Bard theme has a five-star rating, which is great for us. So with that being said, let's go ahead and install and activate this theme. So at the top of the screen, click the Install button. And then once installed, go ahead and click the Activate button. And this will officially activate your theme and make it visible on the front end of your blog. Then you can see that the theme is now listed as active in your WordPress theme management menu and is being used as the parent theme for your blog. And if you're unfamiliar with what a parent and child theme is, no worries, we're gonna address that in a few seconds. But first, let's check it out really quick and see how it looks. So to visit your site, simply hover your mouse over the site title in the upper left-hand side of the screen and click on Visit Site. And beautiful. I know it doesn't look like much and we obviously have a lot of work to do, but you have successfully installed the Bard parent theme that will act as the foundation for your new lifestyle blog. All right, moving on next, let's create the child theme. So first things first, let's head back to our WordPress dashboard. So in the upper left-hand side of the screen, hover your mouse over your site title and click on dashboard. Okay, in this portion of the tutorial, we're going to create a child theme. 
This is by far one of the most important aspects of building a WordPress blog because it can save you a ton of time and headaches due to the updates that are made to the parent theme. Now, if you're new to the concept, a child theme is a theme that inherits the functionality of the parent theme, which is the initial theme that we just installed a few moments ago. Now, the reason a child theme is so important is because it allows you to modify or add to the functionality of a parent theme. It's hands down the best, safest, and easiest way to modify an existing theme because instead of modifying the parent theme files directly, you can create a child theme and override them within. Here's a quick example of why you should have a child theme. If you don't have a child theme, every change you make could potentially be lost when there's an update to the parent theme. But with a child theme, your changes are safe and you'll still inherit the functionality of the parent theme. Basically, if you're going to be customizing your theme, then you need a child theme. Now, there are a few ways to go about creating a child theme, but for this tutorial, we're gonna be using our trusty plugin, the Child Theme Wizard. The Superlight plugin makes creating a child theme super simple. I'd also like to add that out of all of the child theme plugins I've used in the past, this plugin is the easiest and quickest to use. Okay, so to get started in your WordPress dashboard, hover your mouse over Tools and click on Child Theme Wizard. And that will bring you to the setup process, which is pretty straightforward, but let me walk you through it real quick. First things first, you wanna make sure you have the correct parent theme selected, which should be barred. Next, you'll be asked to fill out the title, description, and child theme URL. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. For the title, I'm just gonna call this barred child theme. Then for the description, you're just adding a few notes about your child theme. This can literally be anything you want. Next, we have the child theme and author URLs, which I'm just gonna be using the URL of my blog. And then we can leave everything else as is. And when you're ready to create your child theme, go ahead and click the Create Child Theme button. And after a few seconds, your child theme will be successfully created. That's it. Nice work. All right, then if we go to the theme management page by hovering your mouse over Appearance and clicking on Themes, or you can click this Appearance Themes link. Both will take you to the same place. And you'll see that we have our new barred child theme. All right, so let's go ahead and activate it. So hover your mouse over that little icon and click the Activate button. And your child theme is now active and ready to go. Next, let's check it out really quick. So go ahead and hover your mouse over your site title in the upper left-hand side of the screen and click on Visit Site. And everything looks great and in place. You'll obviously want to do a quick review and make sure that nothing is out of sorts or broken, but the child theme should look exactly like the parent theme, which it does. And it's now active, and we now have a theme that mirrors the parent theme and preserves the custom code changes that we're going to make a little later on in the video. Nice job. All right, moving on. So let's head back to our WordPress dashboard really quick by hovering your mouse over your site title in the upper left-hand side of the screen and clicking on Dashboard. Next, let's start piecing together your blog's layout. All right, so now that you've completed the Bluehost and WordPress setup process, You've installed, activated, and configured all your plugins, and you also installed and activated your child theme. This is when the fun begins. This is where you get to start customizing and designing your blog. And the first thing we're gonna customize is the site title, tagline, logo, and site icon. And thankfully, WordPress makes this super simple to edit within the customization menu. So let's head over there right now by hovering your mouse over the site title and clicking on Visit Site. And as you can see, the Bard theme gives you the ability to showcase your blog's title and tagline within the header. This is a really cool feature that is easily customizable, and the theme gives you some great options when it comes to the look, feel, and overall design of this section of your blog. So, to get started, in the upper left-hand side of the screen, if you click on the Customize link with that paintbrush icon, that will take you to your customization menu. This is where you'll be making most of the changes to your blog, and anytime you need to make a tweak or design change, you'll more than likely be doing it through the customization menu. 
And once opened, you'll see the menu items on the left-hand side of the screen. And then on the right is like a live preview of your edits. All these tabs coordinate with a particular section or feature of your blog. And we're gonna be spending a lot of time here, so if it seems like a lot, no worries. You're gonna get really familiar with your customization menu and what it can do throughout this tutorial. Okay, so as you can see, the Bard theme takes your site title and tagline that you set up at the beginning of the video during the Bluehost setup and uses it in the header. But if you wanna change that for any reason, you could do so in the Site Identity tab. So go ahead and click on that tab to open it. And here you'll be presented with some different editing features for your blog's main header. Now for starters, and this is another reason why I love this theme, the developers have created bite-sized tutorials for various sections of the build process. And you can easily access each tutorial here within the customization menu. Now, I'm gonna be showing you everything you need to know in this video, but these little videos that the theme offers are great tools if you need a quick how-to session while you're building your blog. Okay, next you'll notice that within the Site Identity tab, you have the ability to add a logo, change the width of the text, change the site title and tagline text altogether, enable the hidden title, which is an SEO issue, and we'll address that in a few moments, remove the text, add or remove social icons, and add a favicon. So first, let me show you how easy it is to change the site title and tagline text. So within the site title and tagline fields, simply swap out the text with what you want it to say. So it currently says laptop lifestyle, but just switch out some words here, remote lifestyle. And you can see that the header beautifully gets updated on the right hand side of the screen. Or we can change this to foodie lifestyle. You're gonna start a food blog, or maybe even lipstick lifestyle. If you're gonna have a beauty and fashion blog. Really the options are endless, but changing the site title and tagline are super easy to do within these two fields. Then directly below the site title and tagline fields, you have three check boxes. Now we'll address the enable hidden title and the show social icons a little later on in the video, but for right now, you can display or remove the site title altogether by checking and unchecking this box. This is useful if you have a header image that has font on it or if you wanna use a logo. By removing the site title and tagline, it opens the header up and gives you the ability to get even more creative with the design of your blog. And let me show you what I mean. So I'm gonna head over to canva.com and show you how to create a logo that we can use within the header instead of using the site title and tagline text. So if you're new to canva.com, this website can help you create stunning graphics with their free design software. And as you can see, I use canva.com quite a bit for my blog and YouTube channel. Now I should point out that in this tutorial, I'm gonna be using the pro version of canva.com, which I had to pay for. However, they do offer a free version if you're just starting out. And I'll put a link to that in the important links doc that you can access in the video description below. Okay, so after you sign up for a free Canva account, to start creating, click the Create a Design button at the upper right-hand side of the screen. And then we're creating a custom-sized logo, so click on the Custom Size icon. Then you'll be prompted to enter the logo dimensions. And the Bard theme in WordPress recommends that your logo be 450 by 200 pixels. So go ahead and type in those dimensions, and then click the Create New Design button and Canva goes to work and opens up your custom layout. Now, I've obviously already started designing, but you literally have hundreds of pre-made logo templates at your disposal to help get the design juices flowing. Canva is extremely flexible and easy to use. Just swap out the text to match your blog's title, and then change the colors with the click of the mouse to match your overall brand. And like I said, you have a ton of pre-made templates, elements, font styles to choose from and play with. I should also mention that this is free to use, but they do have a premium version available, which I purchased and I absolutely love. It's cut down the time I spend on graphic design by well over 50%. Okay, so after you've created your logo, in order to add it to your blog, head back to your customization menu and in the site identity tab, click the select logo button and this will take you to your media library. This is where you'll upload and store the images that you're going to use on your blog. And to add the image 
of the new logo, simply click on the Select Files button to search for the logo on your computer. And then once you have the image, there are two things I always recommend doing. If you look at the right-hand side of the screen, you'll see the attachment details. The first thing I recommend doing is adding the alt text. And without getting too technical, the alt text is what the search engines will see since they can't actually see your images. So you'll want to be descriptive when you're filling out the alt text. So my alt text will say laptop lifestyle logo. Next thing you should do is give the image a title. And by default, it will show the image's file name. And this is what will show up whenever someone hovers their mouse over the image. So I recommend changing it for a good user experience. And for the title, I'll be using the blog's title and tagline, laptop lifestyle dash living the good life. There we go. Then once you're done, go ahead and click the select button in the bottom right hand side of the screen. Then you'll have the option to crop it. I'm going to click the skip cropping button since we're going to be using the full image. Then back at the blog, you can see that the image we created in Canva is being used as our logo and is taking the place of the title text. However, the tagline is still showing and the spacing looks a little weird, so let's remove the tagline by unchecking the display site title and tagline box. There we go, looks a lot cleaner. Now, if you decide to use a logo, you'll want to check the Enable Hidden Title box. This ensures that the H1 title is being used on your homepage even though you're using an image. This is good for SEO, so I recommend checking this box if you're using a logo. However, for this example, I'm not going to use the logo, so I'm gonna uncheck the Hidden Title box and then click the Remove button to remove the logo altogether. And then let's put the title and tagline back in place. So check this box. And then for some reason, I had to check and uncheck the hidden H1 box in order for everything to show up again. Just FYI, if your title and tagline aren't showing. The next thing we want to do is add a favicon, or as WordPress calls it, a site icon. Now, if you're unfamiliar with what a favicon or a site icon is, a favicon is a tiny image that web browsers use to help distinguish between web pages. And if we fast forward to the end of the video and take a look at the top of the screen, you can see what I'm talking about. These images in the tabs are favicons. They're great for branding efforts and they help people navigate online. Additionally, some browsers and mobile devices will display a larger image like the Safari browser, which is what you're looking at right now. The site icon that we're going to create will be also used as a browser and app icon for your blog. So that's why it's really important to have a site icon for your branding efforts. All right, back at the blog. Now, before you choose your site icon image, keep in mind that WordPress recommends that you use an image that's at least 512 pixels wide and tall. And that's because the image will be used for your favicon and app icon. And you can easily create your own site icon with canva.com. Just use the same steps as we did to create the logo, but make your image 512 by 512 pixels. Again, it's super simple and it's free. All right, so to add the image you're gonna use for your site icon, simply click on the Select Site Icon button, and this will bring us to the media library. Then click Upload Files. And then the Select Files button. And once you've uploaded the image, don't forget about the attachment details. So be sure to enter the alt text and the title for this image. And then click the select button. And as you can see, the image I just uploaded is now being used for the favicon and site icon. Looks great and looks a lot more professional. Now, if you're not seeing it right away, just give it a few minutes and clear your browser's cache and history. Refresh the page and it'll show up. All right, so let's go ahead and publish our changes. And all that means is that we're making the changes we just made live on our blog. So click the publish button. And our changes are live. 
And I should point out that when I say live, yes, they are live, meaning you can see them. However, we haven't officially launched our blog, so nobody can see them just yet. Just wanted to point that out in case you were worrying that people would see your unfinished blog. The final thing I wanna show you about the header is how you can remove the font and use an image with font on it instead. This comes in handy if you have a unique design or wanna use different style text than what the theme provides. So we'll wanna go back a slide within the customization menu by clicking that arrow there. And then open the header image tab and this will give you the ability to edit the image that's currently being used. Now, before you swap out the image, please note that the recommended size for your new header image is 1300 by 500 pixels. Anything that's sized differently won't look as good when used as the header image. And one way to ensure that your image is the right size is to use a service like, you guessed it, canva.com. Just like our logo in Favicon, we can make a custom image size with canva.com and really change the overall look and feel of the blog with a new and unique image. And for this example, I've created a custom sized image in Canva that is 1300 by 500 pixels, and I've used one of the thousands of stock photos that they give you access to. It's pretty cool. So once you have your new image, head back to your blog and click the add new image button. And this will bring you to your media library. Then we're going to upload a new image, so click the upload file link. And then the select files button. And grab that image from your computer. There we go. And don't forget about the attachment details. I know this seems tedious and kind of annoying, but adding the alt text and image title are good for the user experience, and it can help boost your SEO. Okay, so now that the image is ready, click the select and crop button. And our image is perfectly sized, so we don't need to crop it. So go ahead and click the skip cropping button. And voila, we now have a new background header image. Looks great. Another thing I wanna point out is that you do have some additional features within the settings menu. If you'd like, you can upload multiple header images and randomize what displays by clicking this button. It's just another way to make your blog stand out. Another option is to add the parallax scrolling effect. And let me show you what that means really quick. So by default, whenever the user scrolls up or down, your header, text, and image scroll as one with the page. But if you check the box next to enable parallax scrolling, you'll get the parallax effect within your header. And as you can see, as I scroll, it's almost as if the image is stationary and the text moves against the image as you scroll. This is a super cool effect and typically only comes with premium themes. But for this example, I'm just gonna use the default version. So I'm gonna uncheck this box. And there we go, back to normal. Then the last thing I wanna show you with the header is how to use a custom image with font on it. So the first thing we'll wanna do is remove the current font being used for the site title and tagline. So let's go back in the customization menu by clicking on the arrow, and then open the site identity tab. And just like before, uncheck that box next to where it says display site title and tagline, and that will remove the font. And another thing I wanna point out is that since we just removed the text, site title, and tagline, we'll want to enable the hidden title for SEO purposes. So again, if you have removed the text, site title, and tagline, I recommend checking the box to enable the hidden title for SEO purposes. Then let's go back to the header since we're gonna change the image. So click the arrow again. And then open the header image tab. And the reason I'm doing this is just to show you yet another option you have when it comes to styling your header. By default, the free version of this theme only allows a certain kind of font within the site title and tagline. So this is where you can get creative and make a custom image on canva.com using the different font styles. And let me show you what I mean. So if we head over to canva.com, you can see that I've created a new header image that's 1300 by 500 pixels, but I've added some different styled font on top of the image. Again, Canva gives you a ton of flexibility and options when it comes to image and font stylings. It's just another one of the many reasons why I love them and why I use them for multiple projects. 
Okay, so once you've created your new and improved image and downloaded it from canva.com, head back to your blog and within the header image tab, click the add new image button. And just like before, you're going to upload the new image you just created. So click the upload files link in the upper left hand side of the screen. And then click the select files button. And find the image you wanna use. And then for the sake of time, I'm gonna skip past adding the attachment details, but you wanna get in the habit of adding those each time you upload a new image to your blog. All right, so let's click the select and crop button. And then skip cropping. And beautiful, look at that. This is a great way to make your blog stand out, promote your brand, and create a cool user experience. Either way, adding a unique image with a different font on it can add some unique creativity to your blog's layout. However, for this tutorial, I'm actually gonna revert back to the default version. And again, this is another reason why I love this theme. You really have a ton of flexibility when it comes to the design of your blog, and they make it super simple to reconfigure. For example, the theme stores previously used header images within this section of the customization menu, so you can easily revert back by selecting the previously used header image right here. Perfect. Then we'll need to go back to the site identity tab. So click the arrow in your customization menu and open the site identity tab. And then we'll need to add the site title and tagline back. So go ahead and check that box. And then since I'm using text in the site title and tagline, I'll need to remove the hidden H1 title. So uncheck that box. Again, you'll only wanna enable the hidden H1 title if you're not using the text site title and tagline. All right, we're all set, there we go. So let's go ahead and publish our changes. So click the publish button. And then let's exit out of here really quick and take a look. So click that X in the upper left-hand side of your customization menu. And it looks great you now know how to quickly edit your header and site icon. All right, moving on next, let's create your blog's pages, categories, and primary navigation menu. The next thing we wanna do is configure our blog by adding additional pages, additional categories, and creating our primary navigation menu. And if we fast forward to the end of the video again, you could see what I'm talking about. Having a primary menu with separate pages and categories allows you to diversify your content and it helps your visitors navigate through your blog. This not only creates a better user experience, but it's great for SEO. Another thing I'm gonna show you in this section of the video is how to configure your footer menu. This theme gives you the ability to add multiple menus and your footer is a great place to add things like your privacy policy page so that you're not overloading your primary nav with too many menu items. Okay, so first things first, we'll wanna add our new pages to the blog that we want to display in our primary navigation menu and footer. And those pages are gonna be an about page, a contact page, and a privacy policy page. Now I should point out that a page is different from a blog post because a page is a static standalone piece of content that is separate from your blog feed. And having an about page and contact page is a great way to introduce yourself to your audience and give them a way to reach out to you. And having a privacy policy page is great for legal purposes, and we'll touch on that a little later on in the tutorial, but these pages are essential components to creating a strong relationship with your blog's readers while also growing your audience and staying compliant. Okay, so there are a couple ways to add a new page to your blog, but the quickest is at the top of the screen. If you hover your mouse over the plus new icon at the top of the screen in your WordPress toolbar and select page, that will allow you to create a new page, and it will also bring you to the WordPress visual editor. And what you're looking at right now is the brand new WordPress editing experience. This was a major change in the WordPress 5.0 update, and it has a drastic effect on how you build and design your pages and blog posts. Now, one thing I wanna go over before we create our pages is the visual editor layout. And by default, WordPress starts you out with their full width visual layout, which is what you're looking at right now. This is new and is meant to remove distractions, but I personally like the original settings where they displayed the dashboard menu items. 
So if you wanna see what that looks like, you can change the layout of your visual editor by clicking on the three dot icon in the upper right hand side of the screen. And this will give you access to some more layout options. The first thing I'm gonna change is I'm going to enable the top toolbar. This will display some additional editing options for our blocks and will make us more efficient as we create content. So go ahead and click it to turn that on. Now, once this is turned on, you won't see anything initially, but when we start using the blocks of content in our pages and posts, you'll see the additional editing features that come with the top toolbar when we start using the visual editor. Next, I like having the WordPress dashboard menu items display. And I feel that I can navigate a lot quicker through the back end of my blog when I can see them. So if you uncheck the full screen mode, so go ahead and click where it says full screen mode to disable it, you'll see that the WordPress menu items and toolbar reappear. Again, this is just a personal preference, but nevertheless, it helps me be more efficient when creating content. All right, now that that's settled, next, let's take a closer look at the new editing experience. And I'll go into greater detail as we start to create our pages and posts, but let me give you a quick rundown of the new editor. So one of the major differences in this editor is that each section is broken down into a specific type of block. There are image blocks, paragraph blocks, column blocks, and much, much more. The blocks are a new experience that really give you a lot of creative control over what your blog looks like. And you'll get very familiar with the blocks as we begin creating content. But let me give you a quick rundown of the visual editor before we move on. So first we have a field for our title. Then there is the content section directly below that. And that's where you'll add your various blocks of content as you're creating your blog posts and pages. Then above that is your editing toolbar for your blocks. Then on the right, you have the document, block, and WordPress editor settings, along with the Yoast SEO settings if you've installed the plugin. And speaking of Yoast, you also have the SEO configuration tools at the bottom of the screen. Okay, now that our visual editor settings are configured and you're familiar with the visual editor layout, let's create our about page. So the first thing we wanna do is give our page a title. And since this is our about page, we'll type about in the title section. And I know I said we're gonna be creating this page, but we're not gonna be adding content to the page just yet. We're simply creating them so that we can add them to our primary menu. Then once we've created all of the pages and added them to our navigation menu, we'll worry about adding content to those pages. All right, so once you've named the page, go ahead and publish the page by clicking the publish button. And don't worry about anyone seeing this page without any content on it. We haven't launched our blog yet and then press the publish button one more time to make the page live. And there we go. All right, next, we'll just follow the exact same steps to add the contact page. So just like before, hover your mouse over the plus new link and click on page from the dropdown. And this time, let's add our contact page. So in the title field, I'm just gonna call this contact. And then we'll add our contact form to this page later, but let's go ahead and publish it. So click the publish button twice. And there we go. All right, moving on next, let's configure our privacy policy page. All right, in this portion of the tutorial, we're going to configure your privacy policy page. And this is an aspect of having a blog that can sometimes get overlooked, but due to the always changing privacy and data landscape, it's extremely important that you have a privacy policy page on your blog, regardless of what country your traffic is coming from. Now, before we get started, a quick disclaimer. I wanna clarify that the following information should not be perceived as legal advice. I am not a lawyer, and by no means should this tutorial be used as any type of legal consultation. I recommend that you reach out to a legal professional if you have any questions or concerns when it comes to how to move forward with your blog's privacy policy page. All right, so with that being said, the new WordPress update makes it super simple to get started with your privacy policy page. All websites on the internet should have a privacy policy page because it protects your business from legal issues and also helps build consumer trust. Okay, so let's create our privacy policy page. Head over to your WordPress dashboard if you're not there already, and then on the left-hand side of the screen, hover your mouse over Pages and click on All Pages. 
and this will bring you to your pages management menu, and you'll notice that WordPress has automatically created a privacy policy page for you. Now it isn't published yet, and the content within it needs to be edited to match your blog's specific requirements. And this is where it can get tricky. However, there are some resources for you when it comes to creating your privacy policy page. All right, first things first, let's access the privacy policy page. So hover your mouse over that privacy policy page and click on edit. And this will bring you to your visual editor where as you could see, WordPress has already started you out with the content for your privacy policy page. Now, like I mentioned, this is just suggested content that WordPress starts you out with for your privacy policy page. It's up to you to make sure that it's in line with your blog and your audience. So that's why I recommend using a service like termsfeed.com. This is what I used for my blog and they can help you create trusted legal agreements in a matter of a few minutes. Now there is a cost associated with it, but I personally think it's worth it if you have the budget for it because this can help you stay compliant and give you peace of mind about the protection these policies can offer. Next, you have the option of using the WordPress policy guide, which I'll show you in a few minutes, but they've outlined some recommendations for your privacy policy based off of the software and plugins you've installed on your blog. Then finally, I recommend reaching out to a legal professional. I personally use David Lizerbrim and Associates for my online business and I can't recommend them enough. Now this will probably be the most expensive, but this option will give you peace of mind that you are legally protected when it comes to things like this. And I'll put a link to David in the important links doc in the video description below if you're interested. All right, so for the sake of time, I'm not going to update the content of our privacy policy page in this tutorial, but as we just went over, you have some options when it comes to how you'd like to proceed when it comes to the content of this page. So for right now, I'm gonna publish it so that we can use it in our menu structure. So I'll go ahead and click the publish button twice. And then I want you to know that we're going to revisit this page a little later on in the video, but for now, I just wanna make it live so that I can use it in our footer. All right, there we go. So after you've published your privacy policy page, you'll need to set it in WordPress. And to do that, simply hover your mouse over settings on the left-hand side of your screen and click on privacy. And this will bring you to your privacy settings where you'll set your privacy policy page. Now, as I previously mentioned, WordPress provides a policy guide that you can review and use as a guide when you're creating your privacy policy page. Just toggle between the settings and policy guide here to take advantage of the guide. Again, for the sake of time, I'm not gonna cover the policy guide in detail, but you could check it out and see if the recommended content will work for you and your blog's privacy policy page. All right, so once you have your privacy policy page ready to go, you'll wanna set it in WordPress. And all this is doing is that it's signaling to WordPress, the search engines, and the rest of the internet that this particular page will be used as your privacy policy page. All right, so all we need to do here is select the page you wanna use for your privacy policy page from that dropdown and click the use this page button. This makes it official and will be the first line of defense in the ongoing and ever-changing terrain of the privacy laws online. And then you should get a notification letting you know that the page has been successfully set and also reminding you to update your menus, but we'll address that a little later on in the tutorial. Okay, now that we have our privacy policy page ready to go, I wanna do some quick house cleaning before we move on. So let's go back to our site page management menu by clicking on pages within your WordPress dashboard. And then within that page list, you'll probably see a sample page. And WordPress creates this for you to help you visualize what your content will look like within the theme. But we wanna get rid of this because we don't want the search engines to index it and we don't want people to navigate to it somehow. It's not a huge deal, but it's just the best practice to get rid of it. So to delete it, simply hover your mouse over the sample page and click on the red trash link. This will unpublish the page and completely delete it from your site. And there we go. Okay, moving on next, let's create your blog's categories. Okay, so now that we have the pages that we're gonna use in our primary navigation and footer menus, the remaining menu items are going to be categories. And if you're new to categories, a category is a group of related blog posts that are about similar subjects. And when you create a blog post, WordPress lets you add it to a particular category. For example, in this tutorial, I'm gonna create a category called style. Then when I write blog posts about style, I'll add them to the style category. Then what's even cooler is that I'm gonna add the category to my primary navigation menu so that when someone clicks on style, it'll take them to a page that lists all of the blog posts that have been added to the style category. 
Bottom line, whenever you create a category, it makes it easier for people to find your content. This is not only a cool feature, but it's great for user experience as well. Your readers will appreciate the convenience of not having to search through your entire blog to find relevant posts. Okay, so back at WordPress, there are actually a couple of different ways to add categories. You could do it in the back end of the blog post, or you could do it within your WordPress dashboard. We're gonna cover both ways in this tutorial, but right now I'll show you how to add the categories in the WordPress dashboard. So on the left-hand side of the screen, hover your mouse over posts and click on categories. And this will bring you to your categories management page. And you'll see that WordPress starts you off with an uncategorized category by default, but you can easily create new categories here as well. So since this is a lifestyle blog, I'm gonna be creating categories that you'd usually associate with lifestyle blogging. And these are just examples, so don't feel that you're confined to these categories that I make in the next few minutes. When you're making your categories, think about your content and your target audience. Your category should be like a topic bucket that can house various types of blog posts. For example, the first category I'm going to create is style. And to create the category, simply type style in the name field. And be sure to type this out the way that you want it to look on your site. Then directly below that is the slug. And the slug is the URL friendly version of the category name and it's usually lowercase and contains only letters, numbers, and hyphens. So this slug is going to be style, but with a lowercase s. Then directly below the slug, you'll see a drop down for the parent category and a text box for the description. And the reason for this is because categories are able to have a hierarchy. And WordPress's example of this is that you may have a jazz category, but then under that have children categories like bebop or big band. However, for this tutorial, we're not gonna have a category hierarchy. So go ahead and skip that as well as the description and click the add new category button. And then once you do that on the right hand side of the screen, you'll see that the new category style has been added to our blog. All right, let's add our second category. So in the name field, this time I'm gonna type DIY. And then the slug is going to be DIY, but with lowercase letters. And again, we're going to skip the parent category option and description and click the add new category button. There we go. Then the third category is going to be family. So in the name field, I'll type family with a capital F. And then the slug will be family, all lowercase letters. And then click the add new category button. And our new category has been added. All right, the next category is going to be taste. So just like before, I'll type taste with a capital T in the name field. And then the slug will be all lowercase. And click the add new category button. And moving right along to our final category. Now, before we do this one, I just wanna give you a quick example of if you use a category that's two words. So right now, the last category is going to be travel. So I'll type travel in the name and slug fields. Then let's say you decide to use two words for this category, like travel tips. So in the name field, I'll add the word tips so that the full category name will be travel tips. And then for the slug, you'll wanna add a hyphen where the space would be. So this would be travel hyphen tips, all lowercase. I just wanted to bring this to your attention in case you were to use two words for your categories. However, for this example, I'm just gonna use travel. So I'll put it back to just one word and then click the add new category button. And we're all set. All of our categories have been created and are ready to be used. All right, moving on. Next, let's create our primary navigation menu. So now that we have all of our categories and pages created, the next thing we wanna do is add them to our primary navigation menu. 
Now, the Bard theme gives you some options when it comes to how you want to configure your menus. If we fast forward to the end of the video real quick, you can see that the primary nav sits right below the header. However, you can also add a secondary menu that sits at the very top of the screen, as well as a footer menu that can display various widgets and pages towards the bottom of your blog. So to start building our primary nav back at WordPress, we'll need to go to our customization menu. And the quickest way to get there is to hover your mouse over your blog's title in the upper left-hand side of the screen and click on Visit Site. Then when it comes to building your menus, you have a couple of options. I recommend using the customization menu, which is what we're going to do in this video. It allows you to see your changes in real time and it's more convenient in my opinion. However, the Bard Themes developers created this setup menu option that gives you another way to create your menu. Clicking on it takes you to the back end of WordPress where you could still build your menu, but you can't see the changes in real time. Now, I'm a visual person, so I like using the customization menu. So for this example, we're gonna do that. So let me go back to the homepage really quick. All right, so let's go ahead and start building our primary nav. So go ahead and open the customization menu by clicking on customize at the top of the screen. And before we move on, let me give you a quick refresher of the customization menu. So anytime we need to make some tweaks to our theme, we'll more than likely do so through the customization menu. And the layout's pretty user friendly. On the left is where you have all the customizable features of your blog. And then on the right is where you can see your changes in action. It's like a live action site builder where you could see your changes happen in real time. It's pretty cool. Then finally, towards the bottom of the screen, you have the ability to toggle between the different device types that are used to view your blog. You can go through mobile, tablet, and desktop. This is yet another way to preview your changes to ensure that they look good across all devices. All right, so now that you have a good refresher on the customization menu, let's create our primary nav. So the first step is to open the menus tab, so go ahead and do that. And this is where you can build out all the menus for your blog. So go ahead and click the Create New Menu button. Next, you'll be prompted to give your menu a name. So in the Name field, type what you want it to be called. And I'm just going to name this Primary Menu. Then below that is where we'll set the location of the menu. Again, this is our primary navigation menu on our homepage. So the menu location will be Main Menu and then click the next button. Next, it's time to actually build out the menu by adding menu items to it. So click the add items button. And from here is where you'll begin to piece together your menu. For this example, I'm gonna be adding some pages and categories to the primary nav. So to add specific pages to the menu, Open the Pages tab, if you haven't done so already, on the right-hand side of the screen, and select the pages that you want to add to the menu. Now, you're probably noticing that there's a home page listed within all the other pages that you've created. And that's because WordPress automatically creates this home menu item so that you could give your audience a way back to your home page through your primary nav. You used to have to build this out yourself using a custom link, but now you can just add it with all the other pages. So, for this primary nav, I'm going to add the home page the About page, and the Contact page. Then you'll also notice that after you select the pages you want to use in your nav, you'll see them display on the left-hand side of the screen as well as on your blog. It's pretty cool. Another cool feature of this customization menu is that you can rearrange the primary menu items by dragging and dropping them in the order that you'd like on the left-hand side of the screen. And as you do that, you'll also see the menu items on your blog change as well. Next, let's do the same thing for the categories. So click on the Categories tab. And then select the categories that you want to add to the primary navigation menu like so. Perfect then I want to reorder these menu items. So another way to do that is to click on the reorder link on the left-hand side of the screen, and then click the arrows to move the menu items until you get them in the order you want. So I want to move the contact menu item all the way to the bottom, so I'll click that down arrow and move it to the bottom of the list. And when I say bottom, 
it's actually moving the contact menu item to the far right of our primary nav. All right, there we go. So let's go ahead and save and publish our changes before moving on. So click the done link. Then click the publish button at the top of the screen to make these changes live. Then next I want to show you how to add a secondary menu, or as the theme calls it, the top bar. This can come in handy if you have additional pages or categories that you want to use but you don't have enough room in the primary nav. It's really up to you, but here's how you'd add that. So first we need to enable the top bar in order for this to work. So go back a couple of slides within the customization menu by clicking that arrow button in the upper left hand side of the screen. And then click it one more time. Next, open the top bar tab. And then check the box next to where it says top bar. This will turn on the feature and as you can see, it allows you to add a secondary menu at the top of the screen. All we need to do now is to create a menu to display there. So let's go back within the customization menu again by clicking the arrow and this time open the menus tab. And then these are the exact same steps as when we created our primary navigation menu. Only this time we're creating a totally different menu to display on the top bar. So go ahead and click the create new menu button and then name it. So I'm going to name this one secondary menu. Then for the menu location, select top menu and click the next button. Then it's time to add some menu items to this menu. So click the add items button. And for this example, I'm just going to be adding categories, but you'll obviously want to have different menu items for each menu. This is just so that you can get an idea of how the top bar menu behaves. So I'll select the categories. And there we go, looks good. Then let's publish this really quick to get a better idea of what it'll look like on your live blog. So go ahead and click the publish button. And as you can see, the top bar gives you another opportunity to drive traffic to different parts of your blog. However, for this tutorial, I'm not going to use it. So let me delete this menu really quick. And then I'll need to disable the top bar menu. So click the arrow to go back and open the top bar tab. And then uncheck that box. And this will disable the top bar and remove that white bar at the top of the screen. All right, there we go. So let's go ahead and publish these changes to make them live. And then let's exit out of the customization menu to check out the primary nav by clicking the X in the upper left hand side of the screen. And there we go. Our primary navigation menu is up and running and the pages and categories within the menu are now in the order that we want. Looks great. Next, let's create our footer menu. And if we fast forward really quick, you can see what we're going to be making. So this theme gives you a lot of flexibility when it comes to your menu placement. In addition to your primary nav and your top bar nav, you can also create other menus within your blog like a footer menu. And this is a great place to put menu items that are geared more towards legal and compliance. And I should point out that we'll add different widgets to the footer a little later on in the tutorial, but right now we're just adding pages. So let's add your privacy policy page to your footer menu. Okay, so back at the blog, we're going to need to revisit our menu management page. So open your customization menu again. And then find the menus tab. And once again, we're going to be creating a new and separate footer menu. So click the create new menu button. Then in the name field, let's name this menu footer for obvious reasons. And then for the menu location, select footer. And click the next button. And then next we're obviously adding new menu items, so click the add items button. 
Then we're adding the privacy policy page to this menu. So within the pages section, select the privacy policy page. And I'm only adding one page to this footer menu for the time being, but if you wanna add more, go ahead and do that now. Then if we scroll down to the bottom of the blog, you can see how it displays in the footer. Looks good. And then let's make this live. So click the publish button. And then I'm gonna exit out of here again to check it out. So click the X in the upper left-hand side of the screen to exit your customization menu. And then if we scroll down a bit, you'll see that the footer menu is activated and your privacy policy page is displaying. Again, we'll be adding more to the footer a little later on, but for now, let's move on and create actual content for your blog, starting with your about page. Okay, so the first page we're gonna create content for is your about page. And if we fast forward really quick, you can get a better idea of what we're going to be designing. So your about page is not only a great place to introduce yourself, but it also serves as a way to communicate your mission and vision to your blog's readers. And the Bard theme presents your content with a cool, minimalist look and feel. And you can also easily add images and headings to the page as well. I just love the way it looks and it's super simple to make. So let's get started. Okay, back at our blog, before we do anything, I wanna clean up the theme's layout really quick. And what I mean by this is that if you look at the homepage, you'll see that the theme starts you out with two sidebars on the left and right hand side of the content. These sidebars are global elements, meaning they'll look like this throughout your blog and on your about page. This isn't a bad thing necessarily, but for this tutorial, I'm gonna have a two column layout that has content on the left and the sidebar on the right. This is a best practice and it's what you typically see out in the real world. So to remove the left sidebar, let's head to the customization menu by clicking customize at the top of the screen. Then you'll wanna open the widgets tab. And from here, you'll see that you have right, left and alt sidebars along with the footer and Instagram widgets. Now we'll address all of these throughout the video, but for now, I wanna remove the left sidebar. So go ahead and open that tab. Then you'll see that each section of the sidebar is represented by these widgets. Now, if you didn't install and activate the classic widgets plugin earlier in the tutorial, your sidebar will look different because WordPress now uses blocks to build the sidebar instead of widgets. I think the widget editing experience is much more user friendly, so that's why I'm using it in this video. Either way, if you wanna follow along exactly with what I do in this video, be sure to install and activate the classic widgets plugin before moving on in this section of the tutorial. Okay, so WordPress starts you off with these widget placeholders to give you an idea of what your sidebar will look like. But I don't wanna have two sidebars. So to remove this sidebar completely, we'll need to remove all of the blocks within it. So all you're gonna do is click the arrow next to each widget to open it. Then towards the bottom of the widget, click the red remove link. And that will completely remove the widget from the sidebar. Then if you remove the final widget by following the same steps, and click the red remove link, that will completely remove the left sidebar altogether, and we now have the two column layout that we want for our blog, the content on the left and the sidebar on the right. All right, then let's publish our changes really quick, so click the publish button to save this. Then let's exit the customization menu and take a look at the new layout. So click the X in the upper left hand side of the screen. And now your blog will use the two column layout with the content on the left and the sidebar on the right. This is obviously your homepage. So your blog feed will display on the left and the sidebar on the right. And then if we visit our about page by clicking on the about menu item in the primary nav, You'll see that the two column layout is used here as well, but the page content will be on the left and the sidebar on the right. Now we obviously have some work to do when it comes to the content in the sidebar for this page, but once we get everything situated, this will look great. And speaking of that, let's start creating content and building your about page. 
So if you're already at the page you wanna edit like we are, then you can simply click the edit link at the top of the screen in your WordPress toolbar. And this will take you to the back end of the page where you can access the WordPress editor and begin to add content blocks to the page. Now, hopefully your memory of the WordPress editor is somewhat fresh, but I can assure you that if you're brand new to WordPress, you'll get the hang of this in no time. Using the new content blocks is super intuitive and really streamlines the content creation process. So without further ado, let's create our about page. Okay, we already have our title. So the next thing we wanna do is start adding content. And the way we'll do that is with the new content blocks. Now you have a few ways to add the blocks. The first is below the title. If you click that plus icon, that will open up a pop-up menu displaying some of the most used blocks. Now, this is just a quick menu where you do have the ability to search and browse all of the blocks available. However, another way to access the blocks is to click the additional plus icon that's located in the upper left-hand side of the screen. This will display all of the blocks and patterns that you can use within your blog page or post. And as you can see, there are text blocks, media blocks, design blocks, and much, much more. And when you have some extra time, I encourage you to explore the blocks and get familiar with what they can do. These blocks can really change the entire landscape of your content and save you a ton of time when it comes to designing your blog. However, for this page, we're going to keep it simple and use text, headings, and some images. But trust me, it's still gonna look great. Okay, so let's exit out of the block menu really quick by clicking the X in the upper left-hand side of the screen. Then before we do anything with the page, I wanna say that when I create these pages and posts within this tutorial, please don't feel that you have to do exactly as I do. Yes, you should follow the instructions, but I want you to get creative when it comes time for you to build your about page. So please take these instructions to heart, but don't think that you have to bake it exactly as I do. So that being said, let's create your about page. So right below the title, go ahead and place your cursor there and start typing your introduction. Now for this tutorial, I'm just pasting some dummy text here, but this is where you'll wanna start writing about you and introducing yourself to your audience. Then as you start writing, the new WordPress editor is automatically creating what is called paragraph blocks. You'll also probably notice that as you type and press enter on your keyboard, the WordPress editor is similar to drafting an email or writing a Word doc. So it should feel pretty familiar as you're typing. Additionally, each block comes with editing settings and a toolbar that gives you even more editing options within the block. You can change the alignment, add bold font, italicize it, create a hyperlink, and much more. And we'll cover some of the other editing options, but the new block features is a powerful editing tool that you can use as you create content. Next, I wanna add a heading, and this will be a different sized and formatted font that stands apart from the rest of the text. Having different headings within your content is good for SEO, content structure, and readability. Headings help people skim through content and quickly find what they want as well. So to achieve this, we'll need to add a heading block after the paragraph block. And to add a completely new block, simply press enter on your keyboard like you're gonna start a new paragraph, and this will give you some space to add a new block. Then you can click either one of the plus icons and that will bring up the block menu. Then simply find the heading block and click on it. And in the space provided, add your heading. And this heading is gonna be about the mission of my blog, so I'll title this My Mission. And there we go, our first heading looks great. Again, you can see that each block has its own toolbar of editing features, so feel free to play around and see what works best for you. However, I recommend that all headings use the H2 heading size. That's the best practice for SEO and just a quick tip. Okay, next I'm gonna add some more text below that. So again, I'm just pasting some dummy text here, but this is where you would start writing again. All right, next let's add another heading. So I'm gonna use the plus icon and add a new block and then find the heading block. And this section of the page is going to be about my vision for the blog, so I'll title this My Vision. Then again, I'm just adding dummy text here as a placeholder, but again, this is where you would start writing content. And then there we go, that's gonna do it for the text of this page. Looks pretty good. Next, I wanna add some images within the content. And the way we'll do that is with some image blocks. 
Now, I went ahead and created some unique images using Canva.com. They have some great templates to choose from, and as you can see here on the left, they can give you a lot of creative freedom when it comes to designing media to use on your blog. And once you choose a template, you can change the color, you can add text, you can even swap out the images being used. Again, this is a great way to add a little creative flair to your site and make it stand out. And for this example, I've created two images that I'm gonna place within the content of our about page to help keep the reader engaged and to spice up the content a little bit. I should also mention that the images I'm using are 500 by 750 pixels. And I recommend using smaller sized images when adding them to your blog. It'll save on load time and it will help your site run faster. Okay, so back at WordPress, as I mentioned a little earlier, we're going to use image blocks to add these images. And the first one will be within the My Mission section. So what you'll wanna do is place your cursor at the end of the My Mission text within the heading block and then press enter. This will create some extra space for the new image block. Next, we need to add the block. So click the plus icon and find the image block. And there we go. Then you have the option to upload a new image, add one from your media library, or insert from a URL. However, for this example, I'll be uploading the images I created in Canva. So let's click the upload button. And then I'll find the image that I wanna use on my computer. And there we go. Then if you look to the right, you'll see the block settings. This gives you more creative control over how your image is displayed. However, before we configure it, I highly recommend that you add the alt text. Simply type out your alt text in the field provided within the block settings. This is good for SEO and is just a good habit to get into whenever you're uploading images to your blog. Next, I wanna adjust the size of the image so that it looks a little more aligned with the text of the page. It looks a little large right now. So you have a few ways to do this. First, you can drag and drop these two circles on the image like so. This gives you a quick and easy way to adjust the size. Next, you can also use the block settings. If you look towards the right-hand side of your screen, again, under the dimension settings, you have some more detailed options when it comes to resizing the image. First, let me reset the image back to its original size real quick. So I'm gonna click that reset link. There we go. Then you can actually set specific dimensions within the width and height fields. For example, I'm gonna change the image size to 300 pixels wide. And when I do that, it automatically reconfigures the image correctly within the content. It's pretty cool. Next, I wanna realign the image so that it sits to the left of the content. So this time within the block toolbar in the upper left-hand side of the screen, click on the alignment icon and select align left from the dropdown. And check that out. The image has been resized and aligned left within the text. Looks great. Then I'm gonna do this again with the My Vision section of the content, but this time I'll align it to the right. So follow the same steps as before by putting your cursor at the end of the heading and click enter on your keyboard to create space for a new block. Then click the plus icon. And add the image block again. Then let's upload our second image. So click upload. And find the image you wanna use. Then don't forget about the alt text. Then I'm gonna resize this image the same as the first one. So within the block settings and the image dimensions, I'll change the width to 300 pixels again. And then this time I want this to sit to the right of the content. So I'll click the change alignment icon in the toolbar and select align right. And perfect. I love how easy it is to get creative with your media when using the new WordPress editor. Looks great. Okay, the last thing I'm gonna do within the content is add a signature. Now, this isn't required, but it's a cool idea that can add a welcoming touch to your about page. So, what I did here was I created an image in canva.com using signature text. 
and you'll notice that you have quite a few options when it comes to what type of text you can use, but I just used a simple handwriting text and typed out the name of my fictitious lifestyle blogger, Samantha Jones, but you'd obviously be typing out your name. Then once you have your image back at WordPress, all I'm gonna do is add an image block at the very bottom of the content. So click the plus icon. And find the image block. Then let's upload that image. And voila. We have a signature at the end of the page. Again, this isn't required, but I think it adds a nice and welcoming touch to the content. And so far, so good. The page is really coming together. Okay, the final image that we're gonna add is the featured image. And if you're new to the concept, a featured image can be described as the image that visually represents your blog post or page on social media. It's also the image that's above the content of our page and is used in the blog feed if it's attached to a blog post. Now, I used Canva.com to create my featured images for this blog, no surprise there, and I was able to easily size and design professional looking images that allowed me to keep a consistent look and feel across the blog. Now, one question I get quite a bit is what size of image should I use for my featured images? Now, all that can vary from theme to theme, and it also depends on what social channel you're sharing your blog post or page with, but the featured image size that WordPress recommends for blog posts and pages is 1200 by 628 pixels. And these were the dimensions that I used whenever I created this image using Canva.com. And once again, Canva gives you a ton of templates to choose from. Now, you don't have to use these, but they are a great starting point when designing images and graphics for your blog. Simply choose a template to use and then you can edit the text, images, and colors all within Canva.com. Super convenient if you're on a budget and you don't have the funds to hire a graphic designer. I literally use Canva for all of my blog and social images and it has saved me a ton of time and money. Okay, so once you're happy with your image, back at WordPress to add the featured image, open the featured image tab within the page settings on the right hand side of the screen, and then click the Set Featured Image button, and follow the same steps to upload, and select an image to use. Then once it's added to your media library, don't forget about the alt text and title. Again, I know this seems tedious, but it will pay dividends down the road for your SEO. Then click the Set Featured Image button. And our featured image has been successfully added to the page. And I realize that the featured image is a square right now, but whenever we publish this, it'll be more of a rectangular shape and it will look a lot better on the front end of your blog. All right, next, let's preview our work before moving on. And I highly recommend doing this whenever creating content because as you get more familiar with the editor, you'll start to see that what you create in the back end of your pages and posts doesn't always look exactly the same when it's on the front end of your blog. That's why it's always a good idea to preview your work before publishing. And the way to do that is to click the preview button in the upper right hand side of the screen. Then select preview and new tab. And this will open a separate tab of the preview environment. And then check that out. We have our beautiful featured image above the content. And as we scroll below that is our text, headings, and images, followed by our signature image at the very bottom. Looks great. Okay, so back at the WordPress editor, the last thing you should always do before publishing is configure the SEO settings through the Yoast SEO plugin. And you have a few ways to go about that. First, you can click the Yoast icon in the upper right hand side of the screen. That'll open up the Yoast settings. Or if you scroll down to the bottom of the editor, you'll see the Yoast settings if you've installed and activated the plugin. Both will help you optimize your pages and posts for the search engines. 
Okay, so the Yoast SEO plugin is a powerful tool and should be used every time you create a page or post on your blog. And if you look towards the top of the plugin, you'll see some of the features available like general SEO settings, readability analysis, as well as the schema and social settings. Now for this tutorial, I'm gonna show you the SEO best practices that you should do for your pages and posts, but if you'd like a deep dive into the plugin and learn every feature that's offered, then I highly recommend you check out my free Yoast SEO tutorial on the Blog with Ben YouTube channel. However, for the sake of time, let's just cover the most important things that you should do when using this plugin to boost your blog's SEO. So the first thing you can do is set your focus keyword or key phrase. This is where you can tell Yoast the keyword or key phrase that you're trying to rank for. Then the plugin analyzes the content to determine whether or not you're using the focus keyword in a way that benefits your SEO. Plus, after adding the keyword, you'll be given an SEO grade that helps you optimize your content for the search engines. Below that is the Google Snippet Editor. This is where you can configure how the search engines see your Google Snippet. And the cool thing about this is that Yoast gives you a mobile and desktop preview of what the snippet will look like as you edit it and you can toggle between the two previews here. But again, this is super helpful as you're optimizing your snippet for the search engines. Then below the preview is where you can edit the snippet. And first is the SEO title. By default, Yoast starts you off with what are called snippet variables of the title, page, dash, separator, followed by the site title. You can easily add or remove variables by clicking the insert variable button. This displays the variables that you could choose from to create your title, or you can remove them completely by highlighting them and clicking delete, and then manually type out your SEO title. And remember, this is only changing how your title looks within the search engines, not the actual title of your page. Now, you'll probably notice the line moving below your text as you type. This helps you stay within the character limit set forth by Google and other search engines, and lets you know when you should stop adding content to the snippet by turning orange. You want this bar to be green, and it is. There we go. Below that is the slug, and the slug is your permalink, so whatever comes after the .com of your page will show up here. We're just gonna leave this as is. Next is the meta description, which is the preview text that people see when they search for your blog post or page on a search engine. So within the meta description box, simply start typing a preview of your page. And you'll wanna be sure to use keywords and make it enticing to help improve your click-through rate. Now, you'll probably notice the line moving below your text as you type. This is the same feature as the SEO title field, and it helps you stay within the character limit set forth by Google and other search engines, and lets you know when you should stop adding content to the snippet. Again, we want a green line, and it is. There we go. Then below that, we have the SEO analysis. And if you click on that tab, once you've entered your focus keyword, the SEO analysis checks the presence of your focus keyword or key phrase throughout the content of your page. The plugin will then reward you with a colored bullet based off of its findings and tell you what is good and what needs to be worked on. Now Yoast states that when you follow the instructions and craft your pages and posts so that they get green bullets, they have a better chance of ranking higher within the search results. However, you don't need a green bullet every time, so don't stress too much if it's not green. Then below that, you can add additional keywords to track within your content. You can track the performance within Yoast in a service called Wincher. We'll set that up whenever we create our blog post. You can also set your about page as a cornerstone content. This consists of the best, most important pages or posts you wanna rank highest within the search engines. And finally, there are some advanced settings. This is where you can get deep into the technical SEO aspects if you have knowledge about it. However, for this page, we're not gonna use any of these additional features, but it's good to know that they're here. Feel free to take a closer look at them if you have some extra time. Next, if we scroll up and click on the readability tab, this will show you the readability analysis. And this analysis uses an algorithm to determine how readable your post is. Yoast has carefully crafted this algorithm to make it as accurate as possible without being too strict. It features several checks that'll give you advice when you write your post. In other words, by following this advice, you can make your text easier to read and understand, which is good for the overall user experience and SEO. Now, you'll probably notice that Yoast gives you a score on your readability and SEO analysis, resulting in a colored smiley face. Red is bad, green is good, and I'm using dummy text in this post, so it's obviously not going to be good. However, should all bullets be green? Yoast says no, not every bullet has to be green. 
What you should aim for though is a green happy bullet overall. Having an orange bullet for one or two of these checks is okay. Your article will still be able to rank even if it doesn't pass all of the tests. This is merely an indication, not a necessity. Finally, there are the schema and social settings, but again, we aren't going to worry about these for this tutorial. If you wanna learn more about them, definitely check out my in-depth Yoast SEO tutorial on YouTube. And then the last thing, if you look within the page settings on the right-hand side of the screen, you'll see that Yoast gives you a quick snapshot of your readability and SEO analysis. This is just another way Yoast helps you improve your blog's SEO as you're creating content. Okay, our about page is ready to go. So once you've added your content and designed the page, set the featured image, updated the SEO settings, and previewed your content, it's time to publish your changes. So go ahead and click the update button in the upper right hand side of the screen. And then once that's published, let's click the view page link. And it looks great. Again, I really love the simplicity of this theme and the overall design. I'm really happy with it. Now I should point out that we still need to build our sidebar, but we'll do that a little later on in the tutorial. Another thing I recommend doing is checking how your content looks on tablet and mobile devices. And if you recall, we can do that in the customization menu. So let's open that up really quick by clicking customize at the top of your screen. And yes, I know that there is a way to preview your changes before you publish them, but the tablet and mobile previews are somewhat buggy and this version works a lot better. So that's why I'm using it. Okay, so within your customization menu, go ahead and click the icons at the bottom of the screen. And once again, you'll be able to see what your content looks like on a tablet. And it looks great. And then if we click the mobile icon, we can see what that'll look like on a mobile device. This is a great way to ensure that the user experience is clean and well-designed before sharing it with the entire world. And once again, as you can see, the layout of our content and images looks great on both tablets, phones, and desktop. Awesome. All right, so let me close the customization menu really quick. Then another thing I wanna point out before we move on is that I haven't forgotten that the cookie yes menu is still showing at the bottom of the screen. Normally you would close this after visiting a page for the first time. However, there is one thing I wanna change in regards to the color of the cookie settings button. And it can only be changed by CSS and I'll show you how to do that when we update the theme's primary color a little later on in the tutorial. Just wanted to give you a heads up about that. Okay, with that being said, let's move on and add a contact form to our contact page. In this portion of the tutorial, we're gonna add a contact form to your blog, giving your audience a way to get in touch with you. And if we fast forward real quick and visit the contact page, you'll get a better idea of what we're gonna be making. And as you can see, we're going to use the two column layout for the page, but we'll be embedding a contact form within the content of the page. And having a contact form is a great way to keep a line of communication open between you and your audience, and it's also a great way to build your email list. So to add a contact form, let's go back to our WordPress dashboard. And like I said, we're gonna be using the WP Forms Lite plugin, and this plugin came pre-installed when we initially set up our blog. But if you don't have the WP Forms plugin installed and activated, be sure to do that before this part of the video. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is configure the plugin so that it's GDPR compliant. And we'll only have to do this once, but after we make this quick change, all of the forms that we create with the WP Forms plugin will be GDPR compliant. So within your WordPress dashboard, on the left-hand side of the screen, hover your mouse over WP Forms and click on Settings. And this will bring you to the general settings page of the plugin. This is where you can change things like the license key, the CAPTCHA, integrations, and much, much more. I should also point out that we'll be using the free version of this plugin, but I have a full length tutorial on how to upgrade and use the pro version of the plugin if you're interested. I'll put a link to that video in the show notes, but you can also find it on the Blog Within YouTube channel as well. 
Okay, like I said, what we're concerned with right now are the GDPR enhancements. So under the GDPR section, all you're going to do is check that box next to GDPR enhancements, and this will enable the GDPR features for all of our forms moving forward. Now, if you know that your audience isn't going to be coming from the European Union, then you don't need to worry about this. However, I am, so I'm checking that box and clicking the Save Settings button to save our changes. Okay, now that our changes have been successfully saved, it's time to create our contact form. So on the left-hand side of the screen in your WordPress dashboard, hover your mouse over WP Forms and click on Add New. And this will bring you to the various form templates that you can use to build your form. And these pre-made templates can speed up the creation process and help you quickly get your forms up and running. And WP Forms has also added a quick search feature that allows you to browse their templates to find one that best suits your needs. And the free version of the plugin comes with some great templates to get you started, but if you decide to upgrade to the pro version, you'll get access to some of the more intricate and specialized web forms. However, for this tutorial, we're using the free version of the plugin, and this contact form will be using the GDPR contact form template. And if you hover your mouse over that template section, you have the ability to view a demo of that form before you start using it. This is a new feature that allows you to get a better idea of what the form will look like before you spend time building it and adding it to your blog. It's pretty cool. And this looks great, so back at the plugin, go ahead and click the Use Template button, and that will take you to the form builder. So this is the form builder. And if you look towards the upper left hand side of the screen, you can see that WP Forms has done a good job of breaking the form creation process down into four sections. First, there are fields. This is where you set up the various fields you want to display within your form. Next are the settings. This is where you configure things like your thank you message and notifications. Then we have marketing. This is where you'll connect your email marketing service to the form if needed. And then payments. This is where you can set up a payment processor and collect payments from your forms. Okay, so let's create our form. So the first thing we wanna focus on are the fields of our form. And this is where you'll edit and configure the fields of the form that you're building. Starting at the top, we have the standard fields that comes with the free version. These are your typical form fields you see like name, email, phone number, etc. Then below that are the fancy fields and payment fields. And these are only available with the pro version of the plugin and are some of your more intricate form fields. However, for this tutorial, the standard fields will do everything we need them to do and more. Next, on the right-hand side of the screen is the form preview and builder. And this is where you can see what your form fields will look like as well as build it. This is also where you can drag and drop the fields and edit them as you create your forms. And I'll show you how that's done right now. So within the form builder, you'll notice that each form field is like a block of content. You can tell as I hover my mouse over each field. You can also drag and drop the form fields within the form builder, giving you even more control and flexibility over how your forms are displayed. That's a pretty cool feature for a free plugin. Okay, so for this example, we're creating a contact form that's GDPR compliant. And this form template is pretty much ready to go out of the box. However, there are a few small changes I wanna make to the form. So the first thing I wanna change are the name fields. Now, I don't particularly need the user's last name for this contact form, so to edit the fields, simply click on the field you want to edit, and this will open the field options where you'll have the ability to configure some of the settings of the field. Now, as you can see, for the name field, you have the ability to change the label, format, add a description, change whether or not it's a required field, and even add some advanced options or conditions to the field. And you can play around and experiment with all these settings, but right now, I just want to remove the last name field. I don't necessarily need it for this form, and I've found that fewer fields the user has to fill out leads to higher conversions. So keep that in mind whenever you're building your forms. Okay, so under the Format section, click on that drop-down menu and select Simple. And the form will update and only require one name instead of the first and last. Next, and this is a personal preference, 
but I want to change the actual length of the name and email fields. And you can see in the form preview that they currently don't span across the length of the entire form, so I want them to be flush with the comment box. Again, this is a personal preference, but it's also good to know how to change the length of your form fields. So you can achieve this change under the Advanced Options tab. Then under the field size, select Large. And you'll see the name field span across the entire form. Then I'm going to do that for the email field as well. So click on the email field in the preview to bring up the field options. And then follow the exact same steps. Open the Advanced Options tab and change the field size to large. Perfect. And I'll do the same thing for the comment box as well really quick. And there we go. Now I realize that my form fields are longer than my comment box. However, you'll notice that once we publish this to our blog, the form fields and comment box will be aligned and will look a lot cleaner on the front end of your blog. Okay, next, it's time to configure the form settings. So go ahead and click on the settings tab on the left-hand side of the screen. And then from here, you have the ability to configure the general, notification, and confirmation settings. All other settings are only available in the pro version. But these three things still give us a lot of control over our form. So the first tab are the general settings, which we're at right now. And this is where you can change things like the form name, the description, the form CSS, the submit button text, as well as some additional spam and privacy settings. However, for this video, I'm leaving the general settings as is. So let's move on to the notifications. So go ahead and click the notifications tab. And then this gives you the ability to send out an email every time a user fills out and submits the form. For example, we're building a contact form that will live on a WordPress blog. Then when someone fills out the contact form, this notification feature sends me an email letting me know that someone has filled out the form. This is important if you're trying to drum up business or have people inquiring about coaching sessions or product info or they want to partner with you, whatever it is, you'll want to know when people fill out the form so that you can quickly reply to them. And the notification settings lets you do just that by automatically sending you an email and notifying you that someone filled out the form. So to keep it simple, I'm actually leaving the default notification settings on and as is. However, you can configure settings like the send to and from email addresses. And by default, they're set to send the notification to your WordPress admin email. But if you want to change that email, just remove the admin email smart tag and replace it with your desired email address. And a quick tip, if you're going to add more than one email, make sure you place a comma in between each email. Then you can also edit things like the email subject line, the from name, email message, etc. And like I said, for the sake of time, I'm leaving the default notification settings as is, but feel free to test them out to see what works best for you. Okay, moving on to the confirmation. So go ahead and click that confirmation tab. And this is where you can customize what the user sees after they submit the form. Here you can easily adjust the confirmation settings to display a success message or take them to another page on your site or redirect them completely to a different domain. Simply select the confirmation type you want to use from this dropdown. However, for this contact form, we're going to use the default confirmation success message, so leave the confirmation type as message. Then below that is a text box where you can edit the actual message the user will see after they submit the form. And I'm leaving the default message as is, but you can get creative here and have some fun with different messages if you'd like. Finally is the option to automatically scroll to the confirmation message. And I recommend keeping this checked just for a good user experience. And that's pretty much going to do it for this form. Now, we're not going to worry about the marketing or payment tabs because this is a contact form. However, whenever we create our opt-in form a little later on in the video, I'll introduce you to the marketing tab. But for now, we have everything in place. So go ahead and click the Save button on the upper right-hand side of the screen. 
Then after the form is saved, it's time to add the form to our contact page. And you have a few ways to do this, but for this example, we're actually going to use a WordPress block to add this form to the page. So let's go ahead and exit out of the plugin really quick by clicking the X in the upper right hand side of the screen. Next, we'll need to access the contact page. So if you're at your WordPress dashboard, go ahead and hover your mouse over pages and click on all pages. And this will bring you to your page management menu. Then hover your mouse over the contact page and click on edit. And this will bring you to the back end of the page where we'll add the contact form that we just created. Now before we do, I recommend adding some intro text. I'm just copying and pasting some dummy text as a placeholder, but you could use this space to tell people your contact policy, hours of operation, etc. Then to add the form, we're going to use the WP Forms block. This is relatively new and is a quick and easy way to add forms to your site that were built using the WP Forms plugin. And the steps to add the block are the exact same as when we were building the About page. Click on the plus icon to add a new block. And then you'll probably have to use the search feature to find it. So simply type WP in the search field and it should be the only one, there it is. Then go ahead and click on it to add the block. And so far so good, the block has been added. Then within the block to add the form, simply select the form that we created from the drop down menu. And we're adding the GDPR contact form. And look at that, the form we created in the WP Forms plugin has been embedded within the content through the plugins block. And again, I can't begin to tell you how convenient this is compared to how you used to have to add the form to your pages. This new block feature streamlines the process and makes it a lot easier to implement. Okay, now that we have the content and form added to the page, let's add the featured image. Again, I created the featured image using canva.com. This is a great way to create professional looking images that keep a consistent look and feel to your blog's brand. I can't recommend using this website enough when it comes to creating media for your site. Okay, then back at WordPress, to add the featured image, make sure that you have the page settings selected. Then open the featured image tab. and click the Set Featured Image button. Then follow the steps to upload the image by clicking Upload Files, and then the Select Files button, and find the image that you want to use. Then once you've added the image to your media library, don't forget about the alt text and title. Then click the set featured image button. And our featured image has been added to the page. Finally, don't forget to configure the page's SEO settings within the Yoast SEO plugin. I highly recommend that you at least update your Google snippet settings before publishing the content. This will help ensure that your page is optimized for the search engines. Okay, our contact page is looking good, but let's preview it really quick just to make sure. So click the preview button in the upper right hand side of the screen, then select preview in new tab. And look at that, we have our featured image followed by some intro text and then our beautiful and functional contact form that not only looks professional but will help you collect and capitalize on leads as well as open up a line of communication between you and your audience. Okay, so this page is ready to go. So back at the WordPress editor, click the update button in the upper right hand side of the screen to push these changes live. And then let's view the page. And no surprises here, everything looks great. So let's actually test this form out and make sure that the lead flow is behaving correctly. So I'm gonna fill this form out really quick. And I highly recommend that you test all of your forms after you create them to make sure the funnel is set up and working properly. Okay, so I've filled out all the required fields and clicked the submit button. 
and success. Again, if you recall, we have a confirmation message that will pop up once the user submits their info. Then let me show you the notification email that you'll receive. Again, we set the notification email to go to my WordPress admin email address. And when I check my email, you could see that the notification contains all of the info from the form that was filled out. This is great because you can reply to this notification and due to how we set up our notifications in WP Forms, the reply will go directly to the email address that was submitted through the form. This is also great because it gives you a way to strike when the iron is hot and capitalize on potential leads and business inquiries since this is what's typically coming through a contact form. And one thing to note is that you may need to whitelist these email addresses. So check your spam to see if the notifications are going there and then whitelist them so that they'll hit your inbox going forward. All right, moving on next, let's build your blog's sidebar. All right, now it's time to build our sidebar. So your blog sidebar is a global element, meaning that it stays the same on every page that has a sidebar. And if we fast forward really quick, you can see that each page has a two column layout that can easily be customized to your liking. On the left side is where we add the content and on the right side is our sidebar. This is where we can add various widgets, links, images, and even earn money with affiliate campaigns and AdSense ads. Keep in mind that the content on each page will be different, but the sidebar remains the same throughout your blog. And the first part of the sidebar that we're going to build is an about me section. We're going to have an image followed by your name and title, a little intro blurb that links to your about page, followed by your social links. This is a great way to introduce yourself to your audience and drive traffic to your about page and social profiles. All right, so the way we're going to start building the sidebar is through the customization menu. So at the top of the screen, click customize. and then open the widgets tab. And then this time we're gonna be configuring the right sidebar. So go ahead and open the right sidebar tab. And once again, you'll see that WordPress has some placeholder widgets. So let's get rid of them by clicking the arrow to open them. And then clicking the red remove link. Perfect, now we have a blank canvas to work with. All right, so let's add our first widget by clicking the Add Widget button. Then this will open your widgets menu, and this will give you access to all the widgets that you can add to your sidebar. Think of these as like little plugins that add to the functionality of your sidebar. Now I encourage you to explore them and test different widgets as you're building your blog. However, for this tutorial, the first one we're going to add to our sidebar is the WDV About Me widget. This will give us the ability to create a professional and functional about me blurb within our sidebar. And as you can see, once added, you'll have access to the settings on the left where we'll begin to configure it to our liking. So the first thing I'm gonna add is the title. And since this is our about me section of our sidebar, I'm gonna title this about me. And there we go. Simple, but it's looking great. Next, it's time to add an image. Now this widget gives you some flexibility when it comes to sizing your image, as you'll see in a few moments. However, I recommend using an image that's 275 by 275 pixels, and you can easily resize your image using canva.com. As you can see, I'm using a stock photo, but I've resized it to 275 by 275 pixels using the custom dimensions within Canva. All right, so back at our sidebar, let's add our image. So click the Select Image button. And this will take you to your media library where you'll click Upload. And then click the Select Files button. And find the image that you want to use. Then once you've successfully uploaded the image, don't forget about the alt text and title. So let me fill those out really quick. Then if you look towards the bottom right hand side of the screen, you have some resizing options here as well. 
and I recommend making sure that you're using the full size version before adding it to the sidebar. All right, then let's go ahead and click the insert into post button. And the image will be added to the widget. Now by default, the widget sets your image settings to be 200 by 150 pixels with a border radius of 10. And although this doesn't look bad, let me show you how you could change the overall look and feel of the image within these image settings. So first let's put the image back to its original size, which is 275 by 275 pixels. So I'll change the height to 275 and the width to 275. And then I'll set the border radius to zero. And again, these are the image's original dimensions and overall I think it looks pretty nice in the sidebar. Then if we preview the different device environments by clicking on those icons at the bottom of the screen, we'll get a better idea of what the image will look like on a tablet and mobile device. And so far, so good. Okay, next, let me show you how to make this image a circle. So this time within the image settings, make it 250 by 250 pixels tall and wide, and then set the border radius to 200. And this time you'll see that the image is now being displayed as a circle instead of a square. Then if we preview it again by clicking the tablet and mobile icons at the bottom of the screen, you can get a better idea of what it will look like on different devices. There is the tablet and then the mobile device. Looks pretty cool. I like that too. Okay, however, for this tutorial, I'm gonna use the original image size. So I'll set the image settings back to 275 by 275 pixels and the zero border radius. There we go. All right, moving on to the text settings. And these are directly below the image settings. Just scroll down a bit and you'll see them. And this is where you can add your name, profession, description, and link to your about page. This is a great way to introduce yourself and drive traffic to your about page. So for the title, type your name in the name field. Now I'm using a fictitious character for this video called Sam Jones. Then her profession is going to be a blogger and YouTuber. Then in the description box, just type out a brief intro. I'm just saying, hi, I'm Sam. I'm a blogger and YouTuber, yada, yada, yada. And there we go, looks awesome. Now I should point out that the text for the name and the profession are centered, but the description isn't. However, if you wanna center the description text, I'll show you how to do that in a few moments by using some CSS magic. But next, let's add the hyperlink to the about page. So below the description box are the link text and address fields. All you're gonna do is type what you want the text of the hyperlink to be within the text field, and I'm having it say, learn more dot 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 and then below that in the address field add the url of your about page or the page that you want to drive traffic to but for this example i'm using my about page then you'll see for some reason that they have the placement of the link aligned to the right i like it to be centered so within the link align section there select center there we go then if you're linking to a page within your blog, like your about page, I recommend not having it open in a new tab. If you're linking to something outside of your blog, I recommend unchecking the box next to where it says open text links in a new tab. And that's because if someone were to click on this learn more link, it'll open up your about page within the same tab as your blog. This is just a better user experience in my opinion. All right, moving on to the social icons. Now you'll probably notice that the widget does offer some contact settings that you can configure and add to your sidebar, but for this example, I'm not using that and moving on to the social icons. So at the very bottom of the widget is where you can configure the social icons. This is really convenient because instead of having to install and activate an other social icon plugin, you can do so right here within the WDV About Me widget. Trust me, this is really convenient if you wanna have social icons within your sidebar. So. All you're gonna do is select the social icons you wanna display by clicking on them. Then you'll have some fields pop up and within those fields, next to each icon, add the URL of your social profile. Now for this example, I'm just adding a hashtag so that the icons will show up within the sidebar. But again, this is where you'll add the actual link to your social profiles. 
and there they are. Now, you'll probably notice that they're all black and they have this light gray square background. However, you can remove the background altogether by selecting the no background option. If you look there towards the very top of the icon style settings, you have two options, icon color, where the icon color has no background or icon color background. So if you select that first option, that will remove the gray background. Gives the icon a more minimalist look and feel in my opinion. Then you can also change the size of the icons here if you'd like. So let me just change this from 16 to 20. You can get an idea what that looks like. And you can also change the color of the icons here as well. Now we'll actually revisit these colors a little later on when we determine the color scheme of the blog, but for now, I think they look great. You can see that when you hover over them, they change colors, pretty cool effect. Then let's preview this about blurb in our sidebar by clicking the tablet and mobile icons on the bottom of the screen. And so far so good. I really like the simplicity of this About Me section. It looks really professional, in my opinion, for a free plugin. Okay, the last thing I'm gonna do is show you how to center the description text. By default, it's aligned to the left, but if you wanna center it, you can do so with the help from some CSS. So first, let's save our changes and publish this. So click the Publish button at the top of the screen. And then like I said, we're gonna be adding some CSS to the blog to change how the description text is aligned. So we'll need to access the additional CSS widget by clicking the arrow in the upper left-hand side of the screen twice. And then open the additional CSS tab. And this is where we can quickly add CSS snippets of code whenever we wanna make a change that requires some additional coding. This is an amazing new feature that WordPress added a few updates ago, and it really comes in handy whenever you wanna make design changes that require CSS. And if you're new to CSS, it may seem intimidating at first, but once you get the hang of it, you'll be coding in no time. And instead of making you dig through the source code to find the exact code you need to edit, I've created a code cheat sheet that all you have to do is copy and paste the ready-made code to WordPress, and you'll be able to make some pretty cool changes to your blog. So in order to access the code cheat sheet below the video in the video description, click the show more link. And this will open up the additional notes within the video description, one of them being the important links doc. And all you're gonna do is scroll down a bit until you see the link titled important links for this video. So go ahead and click on that and that will take you to the important links Google doc. And these are all the links that I think are important for this video. First one being the CSS code cheat sheet. Then click on that link or copy and paste it to your browser and it will take you to another Google doc that you're looking at right now. And as I previously mentioned, this document, which is the code cheat sheet, contains CSS code that will allow you to make modifications to your blog. One of them being how to center the about me sidebar text. So find that code within the cheat sheet. It should be the second one listed there. And then highlight and copy the CSS. I'm on a Mac, so I'm pressing Command C on my keyboard to copy it. Then head back to WordPress. And all you're going to do is place your cursor within the additional CSS widget and paste the code that you just copied from the cheat sheet. And boom, check that out. The code is working and the CSS has changed the alignment of the text within the description box on the About Me sidebar widget. It's pretty cool. Then check this out. If you remove and re-add the code, you can see the change happening in real time within your sidebar. Again, this is just a personal preference, but I'm going to keep the text centered, so I'll leave the CSS in place. And then I'll make this change live by clicking the Publish button. And there we go. Then let's exit out of the customization menu and take a look at our site. And check that out. We now have a professional About Me section of our sidebar that gives a clean intro and drives traffic to our About page and social profiles. Again, having an About Me section on your sidebar is a great opportunity to start the relationship with your audience on the right foot. 
Plus, this free widget does a great job at letting you create a professional looking blurb as well. Nice work. Okay, moving on next, let's add an opt-in form to our blog so that you could start building and growing your email list. Now it's time to build your following and grow your email list with email marketing. And the way we'll accomplish this is by adding and configuring an email opt-in form on your blog. And if you're new to the concept, here are the basics. We'll create an opt-in form using WP Forms. We'll then connect it to an email marketing platform called Constant Contact. We'll then add that opt-in form to various locations on your blog. And then once your blog's visitors fill out that opt-in form, their information will be stored in Constant Contact and you'll be able to begin your email marketing relationship with them via professional email marketing software. But the first thing you need to do is sign up with an email marketing company. And as I previously mentioned, for this tutorial, we'll be using Constant Contact. And I've been a customer of Constant Contact for quite a while now, and I absolutely love their platform and their free integration with WP Forms. That's one of the main reasons why I use them and why I recommend them. Now, before we jump in, you may be asking yourself, why do I need email marketing software? Why can't I just use my normal email provider like Gmail? Well, email marketing software like Constant Contact allows you to do so many more things while also staying compliant with the Canned Spam Act. Now, as you can see with Constant Contact versus Gmail, you have so many more features with Constant Contact that will allow you to efficiently collect, grow, and market to your audience. Because that's what this is all about. The goal here is to grow your email list so that you can expand your blog's reach and have a larger audience to monetize. They always say the money is in the list and Constant Contact gives you everything you need to effectively grow your email list. Plus, Constant Contact is offering a 60-day free trial with no credit card required. And if you use my affiliate link within the important link stock in the show notes, you can test drive their email marketing platform for two whole months to see if it's a good fit for you and your audience. Just enter your email address here at the landing page and you'll gain access to the free trial and you can begin to grow your email list with Constant Contact. And again, I highly recommend them and encourage you to take advantage of their 60-day free trial. If after the 60 days you find that you want to keep using them, then you can easily get started for only $20 per month. They do offer an email plus package, which is what I'll be using in this tutorial, and that's $45 per month. But if you're just starting out, the basic email package can help you grow your email list and get started with email marketing. So with that being said, let's build our opt-in form and set up our email marketing funnel so that we could start building and growing your email list. Okay, so I'm gonna log into my account really quick. And I should point out that I'm using a test account, so some of the features may look a little different than yours depending on when you're viewing this video. However, the steps to create your form and connect it to your blog will be the exact same. Now, for the sake of time, I'm not going to do a deep dive into setting up your Constant Contact account, but once you sign up for the free trial plan and you verify your email address, you'll need to create your first email list and welcome email. And I'll show you how to do that right now. So the first thing we want to do is create our email list. This is essentially where we will store all of the emails that are submitted through our opt-in form. So to create your list, Click on the Contacts tab in the primary nav. And then we're creating a brand new list. So click the Create List button. Then for this example, this list is going to be attached to an opt-in form that will live within our sidebar and promote a newsletter. So I'm going to title this list Lifestyle Blog Newsletter. And then click the Save button. And we now have our first list. Next, it's time to create our opt-in form that will connect to this list. So let's head back to our blog. And as I previously mentioned, we're gonna be using the WP Forms plugin to create our opt-in form that we will then embed within our sidebar. Then that will be connected to the list that we just created in Constant Contact. I know it may sound confusing if you're brand new to all this, but once we get going, it'll become much easier to understand once you see the process and how everything is connected. So first things first, we'll need to access the WP Forms plugin. So let's head back to our WordPress dashboard by hovering your mouse over your site title in the upper left-hand side of the screen and clicking on dashboard. And then we're adding a new form. So on the left-hand side of the screen, hover your mouse over WP Forms and click add new. 
And this process is going to be somewhat similar to how we created our contact form, but there are a few additional steps that we'll need to take in order to connect to Constant Contact. So first, I'm gonna name this form, and this is just so that I can keep track of it in the back end of WordPress, and I'm gonna call this form Sidebar Form, for obvious reasons. Then you have multiple ways to create the opt-in form, and I recommend testing different templates to see what works best for you. But for this example, we're gonna be using the opt-in form template. It's pretty straightforward. So go ahead and click the Use Template button, Then once again, I'm gonna be changing the first and last name field so that it's just one name. So click on that field to open up the field settings. And from the format dropdown, select simple. And there we go. The first and last name fields have been consolidated to one name field. Then open the advanced tab. and change the field size to large. And there we go. Then I'm gonna change the field size of the email field, so I'll follow the same steps to do that by clicking the email field to open its settings. And then open the advanced tab. And select large for the field size. Now both of our form fields will stretch the entire width of our sidebar, perfect. Next, I know that I'm gonna have visitors from the EU, so I'll need to add the GDPR compliance checkbox to this form. So open the Add Fields tab, and then under the Standard Fields, simply drag and drop the GDPR agreement field where you want it located within your form. And I recommend placing it right above the Submit button. There we go. Again, how cool is that? All right, now we have our sidebar opt-in form. Now for the sake of time, I'm leaving all the default settings as is, but feel free to configure them to your liking if needed. Next, it's time to connect this form to our constant contact list. But before we move on, be sure to save your form. WP Forms requires that you save it before moving on to the marketing tab. So click the save button in the upper right hand side of the screen. And now it's time to connect this form to our list that we created in Constant Contact. This way, anytime someone fills out this opt-in form, their information will be sent to and stored within the Lifestyle Blog newsletter list that we just created in Constant Contact. So to get started, we'll need to open the Marketing tab. And this is where you'll connect your email service provider to your form. Now, WP Forms has made this process really straightforward, which is super convenient and saves you a ton of time. Trust me. All right, so all you're gonna do is select your email marketing service provider from the list of options on the left-hand side of the screen. And the great thing about Constant Contact is that WP Forms allows you to connect to them using the free version of their plugin. So go ahead and select Constant Contact on the left-hand side of the screen there. Then next, it's time to connect the plugin to our Constant Contact account. So click the Add New Connection button and then you'll be asked to name the connection. This is just how you'll distinguish between each connection within WP Forms. So I'm gonna keep the naming consistent and call this Lifestyle Blog Newsletter. Then click OK. Next, it's time to make the connection. So click where it says, click here to register with Constant Contact. And then a pop-up should appear where you'll be asked to log into your Constant Contact account. Then after logging in, you'll be asked whether or not you wanna allow access to WP Forms. And we do, so go ahead and click the Allow button. Then after a few seconds, you'll be given your Constant Contact authorization code. I'm blurring it out for security purposes, but go ahead and highlight and copy this code. I'm on a Mac, so I'm clicking Command-C on my keyboard to copy it. Then back at WP Forms, paste that authorization code within that first field. Then below that, you'll give the Constant Contact account a nickname, and I'll name this Lifestyle Blog Newsletter, again, keeping everything consistent. Then click the Connect button, 
And next, you'll want to configure the connection by selecting the account and list you want to connect the form to. So I'm using the Lifestyle Blog Newsletter Constant Contact account, and I'm connecting this form to the Lifestyle Blog Newsletter list. Next are the list fields. And this is telling WP Forms what information to send to Constant Contact. First is the email. So next to where it says email, click that drop down menu and select email. Next is the full name. So click that drop down and select name full. And there we go. Our opt in form has been created and connected to our Constant Contact list and account. So let's save our form really quick. So click the save button. And since this form will live within our sidebar, we're going to be using the WP Forms widget. So let's go ahead and exit out of the plugin. And as you can see, our sidebar form has been created and is ready to be used. So let's go ahead and visit our site so that we could add this form to our sidebar. So in the upper left hand side of the screen, hover your mouse over your site title and click on visit site. And then all the changes that we're going to make are going to be done through our customization menu. So once again, at the top of the screen, click on customize. And then open the widgets tab. And the right sidebar tab. And then we're going to be adding a widget. So click the add a widget button. And then find the WP forms widget. It should be at the bottom of the list there. So scroll down. There it is. Then from here, we want to give this a title. So in the title field, since this form is connecting to our newsletter list, I'm going to title this newsletter. I know that's a pretty boring example, but that's all I got right now. Okay, looking good so far. Then from the form drop down, select the form that you want to display. And we want our sidebar form. There it is. And check that out. The widget is working and our opt-in form that we created in WP Forms is displaying beautifully within our sidebar. So let's publish our changes and make this form live. And then let's exit out of the customization menu and test our form out. Now I know I say this a lot, but I just love the simplicity of this theme. Plus the free WP Forms plugin allows us to create this professional looking opt-in form and easily add it to the sidebar. If this was your first time doing something like this, I just want you to know that it isn't typically this easy. There's usually a lot of technical roadblocks and hoops to jump through in order to make a form look this nice and properly connect to an email marketing service provider. And speaking of that, let's test out our new form and make sure the funnel is set up correctly. So I'm gonna fill out this form really quick and then I'll submit it. And we got our confirmation message, nice. Then if we head over to Constant Contact and refresh our Lifestyle Blog Newsletter list, Success. Our form submission has been captured and we are growing our email list with constant contact. Perfect. So our email marketing funnel works. The next step in this process is to create an automated welcome email that will be triggered every time someone signs up through this opt-in form and joins this list. Now, I'm not going to cover that in this video because it takes about another 30 minutes to set up. However, I highly recommend that you check out my constant contact tutorial. There, I'll show you how to set up and create your welcome email for this list. This is super important because it will ensure that you're setting and meeting the expectations of your audience. Plus having a welcome email is just a professional best practice and it's super easy to do within Constant Contact. So after we're done building this blog, be sure to check out my Constant Contact tutorial on my YouTube channel so that you can ensure that your funnel is set up correctly. And I'll put a link to that video within the important link stock that you can access in the video description below. Next, let's configure the colors that are used throughout your blog.
In this portion of the tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to change the color used throughout your blog so that there's a consistent look and feel to your blog's design and brand. And if we fast forward really quick, you can see what we're gonna be changing. So first, we're gonna update the accent color. This is a small yet important detail that can help make sure that your site is aligned with your overall brand. Next, we'll update the hover color used in the social icons so that they match the accent color. This is an easy switch that we can make within the sidebar widget. Then the final two color changes we're gonna make will require a little CSS, but they're still super easy to implement. First, we'll update the color used for the cookie settings accept button. By default, it's green, but we can change it with some CSS. Then finally, we'll swap out the gray color of the submit button on the opt-in form. And we're gonna make sure that it matches your blog's accent color as well. Again, these seem like small changes, but they go a long way in helping your blog's brand stay consistent throughout the entire user experience. Okay, so back at our blog, the first thing we're going to adjust is the accent color. And these changes will be made within your customization menu. So click customize at the top of the screen. And then open the colors tab. And you'll be presented with some editing options for your blog's colors. Here you'll have the ability to change the accent, header, and background color. You can also add an image to the background as well, but for this example, we're just gonna be changing the colors. So the first one we'll change is the accent color. And again, the theme starts you off with this light blue color, but to change it, simply click on the select color button, and this will open a color selector tool. You can drag and drop the tool across different colors and easily change the color scheme or if you have a specific color in mind, you can use the color hex color code. And here's how it works. If you go to color-hex.com, you can literally choose from thousands of colors and their hex color codes. And all a hex color code is, is it's a way of specifying colors using hexadecimal values. And this code, which starts with the pound sign, followed by a few numbers, is generally associated with HTML and is how color is translated into computer code language. Then once you've decided on the specific color that you wanna use, just copy the hex color code and paste it within the color field in the customization menu like so. And then you can see that the hex color code is being translated on our new color scheme and that's being used across the entire blog. The same goes for the header text color. If you wanna change it, click the select color to open that color tool. Then you can use the tool to choose a color or add the hex color code in the field provided. And I'll just add the same color as our accent color. And there we go. Then if you don't like it, you can reset it by clicking the default button. And this will change the color back to the default black color. Then for the sake of time, we'll skip the header text hover and background colors, but the steps are the same if you wanna experiment and change them to see what works best for your blog. Next, we have the background color. This changes the color of the area around the content of your blog so that each side is a solid color instead of the white. And for this example, I'll use the accent color, but you get the idea. Pretty cool. Then finally, you have the ability to add a background image. Simply click the select image button and upload the image you wanna use. This will replace the background color and display the image you provide in its place. However, for this example, I'm keeping the default white background color in place, so let me clear this out really quick. So I'll click that clear button. And there we go, that's gonna do it for the theme colors. So let's publish our changes really quick. So click the publish button. And then exit out of the customization menu. And let's take a look at our new color scheme. And as you can see, one of the main places the accent color is used is within the primary nav. As you hover your mouse over each menu item, you'll see that it's using the new accent color. Then if we scroll down, you'll see the other places that the accent color is used throughout the blog. Pretty cool. Next, let's update the hover color being used for the social icons. By default, it's using this light gray color but we can change it so that it uses the same teal color that we used for our blog's accent color. So to access these social icons, if you recall, we'll need to open the customization menu. So go ahead and open that. And then open the widgets tab.
and then we want the right sidebar. Then open the About Me widget. And scroll down until you find the Social Icons section. And click the Select Color button next to the icon Hover Color. Then you can use the Color Picker tool or enter the hex color code. Again, we want everything to match, so I'll add the same hex color code as our accent color. And there we go. Now when we hover over the icons, you should see the teal color instead of the gray color. Perfect. All right, so let's publish our changes again. So click Publish. And let's exit out of the customization menu. Then next, I want to change the color of the Cookie Settings Accept button. And again, for the sake of the tutorial, let me show you what we'll be changing. So if the user clicks on the Cookie Settings button within the Cookie Yes plugin bar, they'll be shown a pop-up where they can configure their cookie settings. However, by default, the plugin uses this green color for the Accept button. Again, this isn't bad, but they don't give you a way to change the color within the free version of the plugin. So if you want to change the green color to something more cohesive with the rest of your blog, you'll need to use some CSS. And here's how you do that. So let me close out of this really quick and then head over to the code cheat sheet. Remember, you can access this within the important link stock that's in the video description. And I'll also put a link to it in the video description titled Code Cheat Sheet. Then the code you want will be the first one listed titled Change Color of Cookie Settings Save and Accept button. And one thing I want to point out is that I've highlighted the aspects of the code that you can change in red. Meaning after you copy and paste this code to your blog, feel free to change the hex color code that's highlighted in red. Right now it's using the hex color code for black, but you can easily update it to your liking within the additional CSS after you paste it. And let me show you what I mean. So first things first, go ahead and highlight the code and copy it. I'm on a Mac, so I'm pressing Command C on my keyboard to copy it. Then back at WordPress, you'll want to paste that code within the additional CSS widget. So let's open the customization menu by clicking Customize at the top of the screen. Then open the additional CSS widget tab. And place your cursor in that text box. And paste the snippet of code from the cheat sheet. And remember, you can change the hex color code here if you'd like, but I'm keeping it black. But again, feel free to use any color that best fits your blog's color scheme. Okay, so we can't see the changes until we publish this and exit the customization menu. So let's do that. So let me publish this really quick. And then exit out of here. And then this time when we click the cookie settings button, Check that out, the CSS is working and the green button is now black. I know this isn't a huge deal, but I think this small change can go a long way in keeping your blog's brand consistent throughout the entire site. All right, nice work. Then the final color we're gonna change is the color of the submit button on the sidebar opt-in form. By default, all form buttons are the color gray. And again, that's not bad, but it's kind of boring. So let's change that. And the way we're gonna do that, you guessed it, a little CSS. So let's open our customization menu again. And then open the additional CSS widget. And then head back to the code cheat sheet. And this time scroll down to the very bottom of the page and find the snippet of code titled change color of WP form submit button. And this is very similar to the cookie yes button color in that you can change the hex color code highlighted in red after you copy and paste this code to your blog. It's currently using the teal color that we used for our accent color in the tutorial, but again, feel free to change it to whatever fits your blog's brand. Okay, so to change the submit button color, go ahead and highlight this code and copy it. Again, I'm on a Mac, so I'm pressing Command C on my keyboard to copy it. Then back at the additional CSS widget, just like before, simply place your cursor in the text box and paste the code. I'm pressing Command P to paste the code. And 
Voila, our button color has been changed and it matches the rest of our blog. Awesome. Okay, so let's publish our changes and make them final. So click the publish button once again. Then I'll exit out of here one last time. And there we go. I know that this change may seem subtle, but it can go a long way in making your blog stand out and look more professional. It's important that when you're finalizing your blog's look and feel that you're consistent and changing the colors so that they match is a good first step in ensuring that your blog is a success. Okay, moving on next, let's configure our Instagram plugin and add your Instagram feed to your blog. In this portion of the tutorial, we're gonna configure the Smash Balloon Instagram Feed plugin so that you can display your Instagram feed across the bottom of your blog. And as a lifestyle blogger, your Instagram account is your lifeline to your audience and sponsors, so having an additional way to promote your Instagram feed on your blog is a great growth strategy. Plus, this type of feature is usually something you pay for, but this theme and plugin allows you to promote your Instagram feed for free. And I gotta say, it looks really professional and is super easy to implement. So to add your Instagram feed to your footer, you'll need to reconfigure the Smash Balloon plugin. So head over to your WordPress dashboard if you're not there already. And then on the left-hand side of the screen, hover your mouse over Instagram feed and click on all feeds. And this will bring you to the Instagram feed configuration where you'll see that they break it down into three easy steps create your feed, customize your feed type, and embed your feed on your blog. Super easy. Okay, so the first thing you'll wanna do is create a new feed and connect your Instagram account to it. So click on the add new button, and then you'll need to select your feed type. I'm using the free version of this plugin, so I can only select user timeline, but this is all we need in order to have the feed show up on our blog. So make sure that it's selected, and then click the next button. Next, you'll need to add a source, and this is just connecting your Instagram account to the plugin. So click the Add Source button, and then give it a few seconds to redirect. And then you'll have a couple questions here. First is you're gonna be asked if this is a personal or business account. Choose what type of account you're using. For this example, I'm using personal, so I'll just leave that as is. Below that is where you'll connect your Instagram account. So go ahead and click that login button. That's gonna log you into Instagram. Then you'll be asked if you wanna allow the plugin to access your Instagram profile. We do, so go ahead and click the allow button. And again, this gives the plugin access to your profile images so that they can display them on your blog. Then to officially connect the plugin to your Instagram account, check the box next to the correct source. It should be using your Instagram handle, so go ahead and check that box there and then click the next button. Next, it's time to customize the features of your feed. You may get some quick tips that pop up in the upper right hand side of the screen. Feel free to check them out if you want, but for the sake of time, I'm gonna close this. Then you actually have a ton of creative control for a free plugin. However, I'm keeping things pretty simple for this tutorial, but feel free to explore and test the different customizable features when you have some extra time. All right, before we get started, just let me give you a quick rundown of the plugin. On the left are the customized features and the plugin settings. Then on the right is a preview of what the feed will look like. Now, one thing I wanna point out is that due to how our blog is set up, the feed will look a little different than what is showing in the preview. But like I said, that's why it's important to test different things to see what works best for you. Okay, so let's set up our Instagram feed. So I'm pretty much keeping everything as is but I will make a few minor adjustments to the header and the buttons. First, I wanna remove the header altogether. So simply open the header tab and then find the enable switch. Should be the very first one there. Go ahead and flip that off and the header will disappear. Next, I wanna remove the load more and follow Instagram buttons. Again, this is just a personal preference, but I wanna get rid of them. So, Let's head back to the customize main menu by clicking the customize link. 
And then this time open the load more button tab. And again, flip that enable switch off. And the button disappears. All right, then click customize to go back again. And this time, open the Follow button tab. And flip the Enable switch off. And that button disappears as well. Again, you don't have to do this, but I didn't like how the header and buttons looked with the theme. Okay, so that's going to do it for the feed. So go ahead and click the Save button to save your changes. And then you should get a notification that your changes have been saved. Then to add the feed to your blog, click the embed button. It's in the upper right hand side of the screen. And this will give you the short code. This is the code that we'll use to display the feed on our blog. So go ahead and click that copy button to copy the code. And there we go. Then let's head back to the customization menu. So hover your mouse over your site title and click visit site. and then open the customization menu. And open the widgets tab. And then this time we're gonna use the Instagram widget, so open that tab. And then we're gonna add a widget, so click the add a new widget button. And this time select the custom HTML widget. And then all you're gonna do is within the content section, just paste that short code that you copied from the plugin. And in a few seconds, the bottom of the blog, your Instagram feed will span across the entire footer. Beautiful. Finally, you can give this a title if you'd like. I'm just typing my Instagram, but this could be your Instagram handle or you could have it say some sort of call of action driving traffic to your Instagram profile. But again, this is just a quick example to show you what it can do. It looks good, all right, so let's publish our changes. And then exit out of the customization menu. And then when we scroll down to the bottom of the blog, the feed is spread across the entire footer. And then when the user hovers their mouse over the images, there's even this cool hover effect. And then if they click on one of the images in the feed, they'll be taken to your actual Instagram profile. Like I said, this is typically a feature that only comes with premium themes or you have to pay for it through a premium plugin. So this is really awesome because it not only looks great, but it's helping you drive traffic to your Instagram profile and potentially growing your following at the same time. Nice work. All right, moving on. Next, let's add our social icons to the header and footer. So another cool feature of this theme is that they give you the ability to add social icons to your header and footer. And if we fast forward to the end of the video, you can see what that'll look like. So within the header, under the site title and tagline, you can add a handful of social icons. Again, this is a great way to promote your social channels while also building your following. And then when we scroll down, you also have the ability to add them to your footer. It's just another feature that can add some professionalism and credibility to your blog. Okay, so let's add our social icons to the header and footer. So back at our blog, you'll wanna head over to your customization menu. And this time, open the social media tab And then you'll notice that there are four sections to add four different social icons. And it's pretty straightforward. In each section, you'll select your social network that you want to display from that drop-down menu. You'll add the URL to that social profile, and then you'll add a title if you'd like. But just FYI, the title will only display within the footer. Now you have multiple options when it comes to what social icons to display, but I'm just gonna keep the default ones selected for the sake of time. And then for the URL, 
I'm just using a hashtag just so that the icons will show up. But again, this is where you would enter the URL of your social profile. Then once you start filling it out, you'll see the social icons start to display within the header. Perfect. Next, let's add them to the footer. So we'll need to make a quick adjustment and go back in the customization menu to do this. So click the arrow in the upper left hand side of the screen. Then open the page footer tab. And from here, check the box next to where it says show social icons. And this will allow the social icons that we just configured to display on your footer as well. And if you've configured the Instagram feed as we did in this tutorial, those social icons will display right below it. And then if you hover over them, they even have that cool hover effect that uses the accent color. Pretty cool. Now I didn't add the titles of the social networks, but if you did, you would do so in the social media tab, which is what we're looking at right now. And then within the title field, whatever you typed in would display next to the icon in the footer. Both versions look great, but I'm not gonna display the titles in this example. So I'm gonna remove them really quick and then let's publish these changes. So click the publish button. And then let's exit out of the customization menu and check them out. And they look great. Again, having these social icons on your blog is a great way to drive traffic to your social networks and grow your following at the same time. Plus, they look really clean and professional. I love the way the Bard theme lets you display these icons on your header and footer. Okay, moving on. Next, let's publish your very first blog post. So now that we've configured and customized your blog, we can start adding actual blog post content. This is the exciting part. This is when you become an actual blogger. All of your hard work up to this point was for this moment, and the Bard theme gives you the ability to present your content in a modern and stylish design. If we fast forward really quick, you can see that we're going to create a blog post that uses various types of media within the post. And the new WordPress editor makes it super simple to add GIFs, Instagram posts, images, and YouTube videos, which all have a positive impact on user engagement and the time people spend on your blog. So with that being said, let's start blogging. All right, so before we start creating blog content, there's one house cleaning tip that I wanna go over. By default, WordPress starts you off with a sample Hello World blog post. This is just a placeholder that shows you how the blog behaves when it displays blog content. However, this is a published post, so that means that the search engines will index it and display it, and we don't want that. So let's get rid of it. So to delete the sample post, let's go back to the WordPress dashboard. Then let's open the post management menu by hovering your mouse over posts and click on all posts. And this will take you to the post management menu where once you begin to create blog posts, you can manage them here. You'll see all of your published and unpublished posts. So to remove the sample hello world post, simply hover your mouse over the post title and click the red trash link. This will unpublish the post and move it to the trash. And there we go. All right, now it's time to start creating blog content. Let's publish your first blog post. Okay, so since we're at the post management section of your WordPress dashboard, you have a couple ways to add a blog post. If you look towards the top of the screen, there is an add new button. And then also on the left hand side of your WordPress dashboard, if you hover your mouse over posts and click on add new, that will give you the ability to add a new blog post and it'll take you to the WordPress editor. However, my personal favorite is at the top of the screen. If you hover your mouse over the plus new icon and click on post, that'll do the exact same thing. To me, this is just more convenient because you can access the plus new icon throughout your entire site. And as you can see, this takes you to the back end of your blog post and gives you access to the WordPress editor. Now you're probably noticing that the back end of your blog post looks pretty much the same as the back end of your page, and that's because they are. So you should feel somewhat familiar with how to create content and get around the WordPress editor. However, it never hurts to review. So let's go over it really quick. So for starters, there's a section to add your blog post title. And then directly below that is where you'll create your content and add the new content blocks. 
To the right is where you can configure the settings of the post, the blocks, the actual WordPress editor, and the Yoast SEO plugin. Then in the upper left are the block settings. This is where you can configure the settings of each individual block as you start to create content. And towards the bottom left is the Yoast SEO plugin. This is yet another way to configure the blog post's SEO settings, and we'll be using this quite a bit every time we create content. And then finally, towards the upper right, we have our publishing options. This is how you can save and publish your blog posts. All right, so for this particular example, we're gonna be creating a list post. And lists are a very popular format for bloggers because they're easy to write, and readers love them because they're easy to scan and consume. Plus, people love sharing list posts on social media. They typically have a much higher click-through rate when compared to long-form blog posts. So this post is going to be titled, Five Habits of Successful People. So where it says Add Title, simply place your cursor there and type the title of your blog post. Next, it's time to start creating content and writing your blog post. So we're gonna start with a couple intro paragraphs. So where it says Type slash To Choose a Block, Simply place your cursor there and start typing. Now, I'm using dummy text for this tutorial, but this is where you'll type out the intro of your post. And try to add a few short paragraphs introducing the post and always add keywords that you're trying to rank for within your intro. All right, next, let's start to create our list. And since this is going to be a list of five habits of successful people, we'll wanna add a heading introducing each habit followed by some content and various types of media. Now I should point out that for this example, I'm gonna add all of the text first, then I'll go back and add the different types of media. This is how I create all of my blog posts and I find it to be the most efficient way, but please don't feel that you have to do this exactly as I do. I've just found that this process works best for me when I'm creating blog content. Okay, so after the intro text, I'm gonna add a heading block. And it may be hard to see, but my cursor right now is at the end of the last paragraph. Then to add a new block, simply click enter on the keyboard like you're gonna write a new paragraph, and that'll create some space for the new block. Then like I said, we're gonna add a heading block, so click the plus icon. And from the pop-up menu, find the heading block. Then our first habit of successful people is that they take action. So in the heading field, I'm gonna type take action action. And there we go, have our first heading. Then you'll want to start typing out your content for this particular section below the heading. However, for the sake of time, I'm just pasting some dummy text. All right, let's add our second heading. So just like before, you'll want to press enter on your keyboard to create some space for the new block. Then click the plus icon to add a new block. And then find the heading block again. There we go. And then this habit of successful people is going to be that they stay organized. And then I'll add some dummy text below that again. Then let's add another heading. And now that you have a good idea of how this process works, I'm gonna kind of move a little faster with these edits, but as you become familiar with how to add various blocks of content, you're gonna see how easy it is to create a unique and visually appealing blog post with this new WordPress editor and the blocks feature. Okay, so there we go, the text of our blog post is ready to go. Next, it's time to add the media. And the first type of media I'm going to add is a GIF. And if you're unfamiliar with what a GIF is, it stands for Graphics Interchange Format, and it's basically a short animated loop. GIFs are a fun way to diversify your content and add some life to a blog post. And a popular site for GIFs is Giphy.com, which is what you're looking at right now. And I'll put a link to this site in the important links doc within the video description below. But this site is my go-to when I wanna find a GIF. And once you find your GIF that you wanna use, click on the share icon. And then click the copy GIF link button and this will copy the link that we're gonna use within our post. Then back at the WordPress editor, we're actually going to use an image block to display the GIF. And let me show you how that's gonna work. So I'm gonna add this within the take action section. So I'll place my cursor at the end of the first paragraph within that section and click enter on my keyboard to create some more space. Then click the plus icon to add a new block. and this time add the image block. 
Then from here, we're going to select Insert from URL. And then all you're going to do is paste the link from Giphy.com in the field provided and click the Apply button. And boom, check that out. There's our GIF. Now it looks great, but you can resize it if you'd like by using the block settings image dimensions on the right hand side of the screen. Simply select the percentage and see what works best for you. 100% is obviously the full size. Then you have 75%, 50%, and 25%. I personally like 75%, so I'm going to select that. There we go. Next, we need to center the GIF. So go ahead and click the alignment icon in the block toolbar on the upper left hand side of the screen and select align center from the drop down. And look at that, the GIF is centered within the content and looks much better in my opinion. The next thing I want to show you is how to embed an Instagram post within your blog's content. This is a great tactic to not only diversify your content, but to drive traffic to your social media accounts. Plus, it's super easy to do. Okay, so the first thing you'll want to do is go to your Instagram page that has the post that you want to embed. And for this example, I'm just using my demo Instagram account, but this will show you how it works. And then once you find the post that you want to embed, go ahead and click on it, and that will open the post. Then click those three dots in the right-hand side of the screen, and that'll bring up some additional sharing options for the post. And we're going to embed the code, so click the embed option. Then you have the option to include the caption of the post, and if you want to remove it, just uncheck that include caption box, but I'm going to leave it checked. And then click the copy embed code button, and this will obviously copy the code that we need to use on our blog post. There we go. So then let's head back to the WordPress editor, and this time we're going to add the custom HTML block. So just like before, I'll place my cursor at the end of the paragraph and press enter on my keyboard to create some more space for the block. And then press the plus icon to add the new block. Then this time we'll have to search for it. So type HTML in the search field. And there it is, custom HTML. So go ahead and select that block and a text box will appear that says write HTML, and this is where we'll paste the code. However, before we do that, I recommend centering this, and the way we'll do that is with the center HTML opening and closing tags. Now, if this is your first time doing this, I know it might sound intimidating, but trust me, it's super easy once you know how to do it. And all this is doing is it's HTML that tells WordPress to center the Instagram post within the content. And the way you'll do that is with center tags. So. First things first, place your cursor in the HTML block and then add the opening center tag. It'll look like this. Then right after that opening center tag, paste the embed code that we just copied from Instagram. Then at the very bottom of the Instagram code, add the closing center tag. Place your cursor there and type it out like this. The only difference between the opening and closing tags is that there's a forward slash before the word within the tag. So as you can see for the closing center tag, you have that forward slash and then the word center. Just keep that in mind whenever you're creating your tags. Then when we preview the code in the upper left hand side of the screen, you can toggle between the HTML and the preview. You'll see that the embed code is working and our post from Instagram is displaying in our content and is centered within the text. Nice work. Okay, the final piece of media that I'm going to add to this post is a YouTube video. Now you have a few ways to go about this, but the most efficient and effective way I've discovered is to use a free tool called Embed Responsively. This ensures that your post is responsive across multiple devices and it just looks better in my opinion, which is always good for the user experience. Okay, so first things first, let's grab the YouTube video that we're going to embed. So head over to YouTube and find a video that you want to use, and then click that share icon, and copy that YouTube link. Then head over to embedresponsively.com. 
I'll put a link to this free site in the important link doc in the video description below. But this is a free tool that will allow us to easily create responsive embed code that will make our YouTube video look picture perfect on our blog regardless of the device that's being used to view it. And all you're gonna do is make sure that you have YouTube selected and then within the YouTube page URL field, paste the link that we just copied from YouTube and then click the embed button then the tool goes to work and will spit out the embed code that you're gonna copy and paste within the custom HTML block back at WordPress. So let's go ahead and highlight this code and copy it. I'm on a Mac, so I'm pressing Command-C on my keyboard. Then back at WordPress, since we're embedding HTML, we'll need to add another custom HTML block. So follow the steps to add a new block and I'll add it after this paragraph. Then click the plus icon and from the block menu, find the custom HTML block. And there we go. Then simply paste the embed code within the block, no need to center it, and voila. Again, I know it doesn't look like much, however, if we preview it, again in the upper left-hand side of the screen, you can toggle between the HTML and preview, you'll get to see how the code behaves, and check that out. We have a video embedded within our blog content. Pretty cool. Okay, our blog post is starting to come together. Next, let's add the featured image. So make sure you have the post settings selected. And then under the featured image tab, click the set featured image button. And then we're going to upload a new image. And then select files and find the image that you want to use. And hopefully these steps are starting to become somewhat familiar to you by now. And then once we have the image, don't forget about the alt text and title. Again, I know these steps seem tedious, but it'll pay dividends down the road in terms of your SEO. There we go. And then click the set featured image button. And we now have our featured image. All right, next, let's configure our Yoast SEO settings. And so I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom of the screen. And as we do this, you're gonna notice that these are the exact same steps as when we updated our page SEO settings. The logic behind everything we did with the page is the same as the post SEO settings, but it never hurts to review. So the first thing I recommend doing is entering your focus keyword or key phrase. And this is where you could tell Yoast what you're trying to rank for. And as you do that, the plugin analyzes the content to determine whether or not you're using the focus keyword in a way that benefits your SEO. Plus, after adding the keyword, you'll be given an SEO grade that helps you optimize your content for the search engines. Again, you'll obviously wanna aim for a green smiley face. However, I'm using dummy text in this post, so my SEO score isn't gonna be that great. All right, moving on to the search engine snippet. I'm leaving the SEO title and slug alone, but you can edit it here if you'd like. However, I will update the meta description. So within the meta description box, simply start typing a preview of the post. Again, you'll wanna be sure to use keywords and make it enticing to help improve your click-through rate. And then you'll notice that the line moving below your text page, you wanna aim for a green line. And there we go. And as always, as you're configuring your Yoast SEO settings, you'll wanna pay attention to the SEO and readability analysis scores. Remember, you are aiming for green, but if they're not green, be sure to check out the recommendations that Yoast gives you to help improve your score. Then I'm leaving the schema in advanced settings alone, but I do want to quickly go over a new feature that Yoast has included, and that's the track SEO performance. And if you open that tab, you'll see that Yoast has now partnered with the service called Wincher. And this new feature makes it possible to easily track the ranking positions of your keywords. By connecting Wincher to your Yoast SEO plugin, you'll be able to use their new key phrase performance tracker and will better understand how your posts rank over time. So knowing where you stand in the search results will not only let you discover if your content works, but it'll let you see if you're on your way to outrank your competitors. So to get started, click the connect to Wincher button and then you'll be prompted to create a free account in order to connect. However, for this tutorial, I'm not gonna go through the entire connection process, but if you wanna learn more, just click this link here, and you'll be taken to an in-depth article about Yoast and Wincher that also includes a step-by-step -step video explaining how everything works. 
Now they have a free and premium version of this, so I recommend at least testing out the free version to see if you get any benefit from it. But like I said, I'm not using it in this video, but it never hurts to have more info and recommendations on how you can improve your blog's SEO. And Wincher and Yoast definitely do that. Okay, so that's gonna do it for our Yoast SEO configuration. Now one thing I wanna point out is that if your permalinks look like this, even after you have set the permalink to use the site title, don't worry, it will reset after you preview the post or after you save it as a draft. So let's do that really quick. So click the preview button in the upper right hand side of the screen and then preview a new tab. And then so far so good, we have our beautiful featured image above the post followed by our media rich content. Our GIF looks good. So does the Instagram post and then the YouTube video. However, one thing I don't like is that there isn't much space between the text and the YouTube video, but we can easily fix that in the WordPress editor. Now you may come across things like this from time to time, meaning what you see in the back end of your blog post may not look the exact same whenever you preview or publish it on the front end of your blog. Again, that's why it's super important to preview your work before you publish it. And other than the spacing issue, I think this post looks great. So let me show you how to quickly adjust the space between this YouTube video and text. So back at the editor, before we add the space, I do want to point out that the permalink has refreshed and is now using our blog title. So if you're still not seeing it, try saving the post as a draft and it should refresh and use the title and the permalink. Just a quick tip on that. All right, so to add some additional space between the YouTube video and the text, a quick workaround for this issue is just to add a spacer block and then adjust the pixels of space between the video and the text. So to achieve this, we'll obviously need to add another block. And this time, let me show you another way to insert a new block after the video. So go ahead and select that video block by clicking on it. And then in the block toolbar on the upper left-hand side of the screen, click on that three dot icon. And that's gonna open up some more options for the block. And then select insert after. This will give you the ability to add a new block after the video. It's essentially like whenever we would press enter on our keyboard to create more space, but just another way to use the WordPress editor. All right, so then we're gonna add a new block. So click the plus icon. And then this time search for the spacer block. And there it is. Then for this example, I'm adjusting the padding to be 15 pixels. So you can either use that dot or change the pixels in the spacer settings on the right hand side of the screen like so. And I know it looks kind of odd right now in the block format, but if we preview our work really quick and check it out. And then if we scroll down to the YouTube video, Look at that, our spacer block has added the additional pixels of space and the padding between the video and the text looks much better. All right, we're almost done here. So let's head back to the editor. There are three more things I wanna point out before we publish this post. And the first is how to create a hyperlink. And all this is doing is it's adding a link to a specific section of text so that when the user clicks on the text, it'll take them to another URL. Hyperlinks are essential to any successful blog and you always want to link to relevant content or other pages within your site in your blog posts. It's a best practice and it can help your SEO. So to create a hyperlink, simply highlight the text that you want to link to. Then in the block toolbar, click that link icon and this will open the hyperlink settings. Then all you're going to do is type or paste the URL that you want to link to. And then below that, you'll see some link settings. If you're linking to an external website, meaning not a site within your blog post, I recommend having it open in a new tab since it's taking people away from your blog. So flip that first switch on. And then you also have the ability to tell the search engines not to follow the link and whether or not it's a sponsored link. We're not using sponsored or affiliate links, so you can leave those two switches off. However, if you are using a sponsored or affiliate link, I recommend flipping those two switches on. All right, so once it's set, go ahead and click the submit button. 
and that will create the hyperlink within the text. You can tell it's a hyperlink by the different color of text being used. All right, the next thing I recommend you always do before publishing the post is setting the category. And a quick refresher, a category is a group of related blog posts that are about similar subjects. Whenever you create a category, it makes it easier for people to find your content. So whenever you create a blog post, you need to always associate it with a relevant category. And the way you'll do that is in the post settings. Simply open the category tab, and this will display all of the categories that we created earlier in the video. Now by default, every post will be categorized as uncategorized, but to change that, simply uncheck the box next to uncategorized and select the category that you wanna associate your blog post with. Perfect, we now have assigned a category to this post. Okay, the final thing I wanna show you is how to change the excerpt being used for the blog feed. So after you publish a post, the theme displays an excerpt within the blog feed. This is like a quick intro to the post and typically shows the first few lines of the post. However, if you wanna make it unique or shorter or longer or just different than what the theme uses, you can do that in the post settings by opening the excerpt tab and then adding the text you wanna display within that text box provided. Again, this isn't required, but it's just a quick tip for you to test out as you begin publishing blog posts. Okay, our post is ready for the world, so let's publish it. All right, so if you look in the upper right-hand side of the screen, you'll see the publishing options. First, you have the ability to change the visibility, meaning you can edit who sees it. You can have the public see it, or you can make it private and password protected. We want the world to see it, so I'm gonna leave this as public. Then you can edit when the post goes live by scheduling the publish date. By default, it always publishes immediately, but if you click that immediately link next to where it says publish, this opens a calendar widget that allows you to set the specific time and date that you'd like the post to publish. This can come in handy if you're creating multiple posts in one sitting, or you don't wanna publish them all at once. But for this tutorial, we're gonna publish it right now. So click the publish button. And then you'll be prompted to click the publish button again. And after a few moments, you'll get a notification that the post is live. And you also now have the ability to view the post or copy the link. And we wanna check this out. So click the view post link or button to check it out. And it looks amazing. We have our featured image with the category and title below it, as well as our hyperlink text. Then scrolling down, you can see that we now have a media-rich blog post that uses headings, well-spaced content blocks, and various types of media throughout the post. Again, you don't have to add these different types of media to each of your posts, but it's always a good idea to include some sort of media to help break up the text and tell your story. And let's test out the YouTube video really quick. So click play and awesome, it works, looks great. And again, this is responsive, so it'll look great on all devices. And then if we keep scrolling to the bottom of the post, there's one thing I wanna point out. If you're not seeing this author bio, that's because you probably haven't filled out your bio and the user profile within WordPress. So go back to your WordPress dashboard, hover your mouse over users and click on profile and make sure that your gravatar is set and that you have the bio filled out. This will ensure that the author bio shows up at the end of each blog post. Also, if you've installed and activated the social sharing plugin, you'll see these social icons at the end of the content. However, I'm gonna show you how to edit them in a few moments. Okay, so our post is live for the world to see. So after you publish the post, it will automatically be added to your blog feed on your homepage. So if we head to our homepage really quick by clicking home in the primary nav, you'll see that the post has been added to the homepage slider, looking good. By default, this slider should be enabled, but if you're not seeing it, no worries, I'm gonna show you how to set it up in the next section of the tutorial. And then below that is the blog feed. Now, we currently only have one post, but once you start creating blog content, this is what your blog feed will look like. So as you can see, you still have the slider, but as you publish more content, it'll display three posts instead of one, giving your visitors an opportunity to interact and engage with your content.
And again, if you're not seeing the slider on your homepage, no worries, I'll show you how to enable it in a few moments. Then if we scroll down, you'll see that the blog feed displays the most recent post as a larger preview, followed by a grid layout that shows smaller previews of each published post. You'll also notice the sticky sidebar on the right as you scroll. I love that feature, especially for a free theme. You don't see that too often. I should also point out that we're still gonna configure this homepage and make some more changes to it, but I wanted to show you what the blog feed looks like as you begin to create more content. Additionally, if we go to a published post, and keep in mind, this is just a demo post, so there isn't a lot of content to it, but at the bottom of each post will be this cool previous and newer feature, as well as a recommended post section. This is yet another way the theme encourages engagement and gets your visitors to explore new posts and stay on your blog. I love it. Okay, moving on. Next, I want to show you how to configure the social share icons that display on each blog post. In this portion of the tutorial, we're going to configure the social share icons that are at the bottom of your blog posts. By default, this is where they display, but you can easily change that by configuring the social media share button plugin. And let's do that now. All right, so if you've been following along throughout this entire video, that means that you've installed and activated the simple social media share button plugin. However, if you haven't done so already, be sure to do that before moving on in this part of the tutorial. Okay, so adding social share buttons to your blog's content is not only a best practice, but it's a great way to expand your blog's organic reach. By giving your audience an easy way to share your blog posts with their social networks, you're essentially opening yourself up to a brand new audience and organically getting more eyeballs on your content. This is good for your blog's growth and SEO. So let's configure the social share buttons on your blog. So first things first, let's head back to the WordPress dashboard if you're not there already by hovering your mouse over the site title in the upper left hand side of the screen and clicking on dashboard. Then if you've installed and activated the plugin, you can access it by hovering your mouse over social buttons and clicking on settings. And this will take you to the plugin settings where we can configure it. So I know it may look like a lot, but it's pretty simple once you start moving things around. For starters, they break the settings down into three sections. You have the social buttons that you can choose to display, the button design, and then the button position. Pretty straightforward. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna configure are the buttons that will display on your blog. So within the social buttons section, simply drag and drop the buttons that you wanna activate like so. The buttons on top are active, and the ones below that are inactive. Then you can also reorder the active icons by dragging and dropping them. Again, this will change the order that they display on your blog. Okay, next it's time to select the design of the buttons, and this is pretty straightforward. Within the button design section, just check the box next to the design that you wanna use. And finally, we have the button position, and this is where you can configure the position of the buttons as well as how and where they display. Now for this example, I'm keeping them in line and we'll keep all of their default settings in place as well, but this is where you can change their position, alignment, spacing, etc. Also, if you look at the very bottom there, you can also see the post type settings. This is where you can have the buttons show on different content types other than just your posts. However, like I said, I'm keeping all of these default settings in place. So let's go ahead and save our changes. So click the Save Changes button. And there we go, then let's visit our site really quick. And then if we visit a published blog post, scroll down a bit, I know there's not much content here, but it's just a demo. You'll see that our changes have been updated and we now have the new social share buttons displaying at the bottom of our blog post. Looks great. All right, moving on next, let's configure our blog's homepage. Now it's time to start designing our homepage. And the Bard theme gives you some great features that can help you not only create a unique user experience, but drive traffic to landing pages, online stores, newsletters, and so much more. And if we fast forward again real quick, you can see what we're gonna be making. So the Bard theme offers a couple of really cool ways to present additional content other than your blog feed on the homepage. As you can see, you'll have a homepage slider that displays a few blog posts with a read more call to action button. 
And below that, you have three featured sections that can help you drive traffic to various pages on your blog or other places like an Etsy online store. Either way, these homepage features are great ways to set your blog apart from the crowd and shine. So let's add these to our blog's homepage. And as I previously mentioned, the majority of the remaining tutorial footage will be using a mixture of footage from my How to Start a Lifestyle blog tutorial from 2020. So there may be a few things that look different like the widgets and the sidebar, but I can assure you that the steps we're going to cover were the exact same then as they are now. Also, you may notice that the slider is gone in this section, but no worries, I'll show you how to re-enable it right now. So first thing first, all of our changes are gonna be made in the customization menu. So go ahead and click customize at the top of the screen. Then open the featured slider tab. And the first thing you'll wanna do is check the box next to where it says featured slider. This will activate the slider. Then you have some additional display options that lets you configure what posts show up, how many slides there are, and whether or not you want the arrows to be displayed. Okay, next we'll configure the featured links that are below the slider. And those are those three boxes below the, the slider there. So let's go back a slide in the customization menu and open the featured links tab. And just like the slider, the first thing you'll do is check the box next to where it says featured links. This will enable the feature. Then you'll see that you have editing options for three featured links. Now they call them featured links, but they're actually blocks of content that link to a separate page or post. So for the first one, I'm going to link to an Etsy store. So simply fill out the title and URL fields. So I'm gonna title this shop, and then I'm actually gonna link out to an Etsy store. Now, this is just some random Etsy store, but this is where you could link to your online store if you have one. And the great thing about this strategy is that you can link to and leverage a third-party e-commerce platform. You don't have to host it on your blog, and you can still implement a revenue stream from the homepage of your blog. So I'll just grab the URL here of this Etsy store and paste it within the URL field on the featured link section. Then let's add an image. So click the Select Image button, and you know what to do here. And you have the ability to crop the image, but I'm gonna go ahead and skip this. Then after you have your image, looks really huge, but don't worry, it will automatically resize as you add additional featured links. So let's add our second one. And in the featured link, number two title field, I'm gonna type out free ebook. And this is gonna to link to a landing page that promotes a free ebook. Now for the sake of time, I'm not gonna walk you through the entire process of creating this landing page, but I just added some content and embedded an opt-in form using WP Forms on the page. Then when someone fills out this form, which is connected to Constant Contact, they'll receive a welcome email that contains a link to this free ebook, which is actually a Google Doc. Again, this funnel may seem complicated at first, but it's super simple to set up and I walk you through the entire process in my constant contact tutorial that you can access on the Blog Within YouTube channel. Okay, so after you've created your landing page, at the featured link section, simply add the URL of that landing page here and then we'll add our image. And then I'll go ahead and upload my image and then skip the cropping. And we now have our second featured link section. Looks awesome. All right, time for the last one. So I'm gonna title this one Work With Me and I'm going to connect it to my contact form. This is yet another way to generate leads for sponsorships and facilitate potential business inquiries. So let's add the URL of your contact page and then find an image you wanna use And boom, looks great. I absolutely love the way that it displays that content. All right, so let's publish our changes. So click the publish button. And 
and beautiful. Look at that. You now have a professional looking slider on your homepage promoting your blog posts and driving traffic to them, as well as three blocks of content that are linking to various aspects of your blog and business. This feature can not only drive traffic, but potentially increase revenue. Nice work. The next aspect of your homepage that we're going to configure are the Yoast SEO search appearance settings. Just like our other pages and blog posts, you'll want to configure the SEO, social, and knowledge graph settings of your blog's homepage so that you can ensure that you're doing everything you can to position your blog higher within the search results. And it's super easy to do within the Yoast SEO plugin. So let's access that by going to your WordPress dashboard. Then hover your mouse over Yoast SEO and click on Search Appearance. Then from here, you'll want to first review and update the homepage site title and meta description. By default, it's using your site title page separator and tagline variables for the site title, but you can simply remove them and change it if you'd like. And remember, this is what will show up in the search results and in the browser tabs. Then below that is the meta description. This is the description that will display in the search results, so be sure to be descriptive, use your blog site title in it, and encourage the user to take action like visit your blog. Below that are the social settings. This is very similar to your homepage settings, but this is what will display when someone shares your blog's homepage URL on social media. So you'll want to add an image, update the title if needed, and then add a short meta description. You can just use the same one that you used for your homepage if you'd like. Then for the image, I created one in canva.com. And that's the same size and style of all my other featured images, which is 1200 by 628 pixels. Then back at Yoast, to add the image, click the Select Image button. And upload the image you want to use. Then don't forget about the alt text and title. There we go, then we'll add it. And boom, we now have a featured image for our homepage. Then again, don't forget to review and update the site title and meta description for your social settings. You can do that here. And finally, we have the knowledge graph. This is used within the search results, but I recommend leaving the settings as is and adding an image for the person, logo, and avatar. So I'll just use the same featured image that I used for my social settings. And there we go. Our homepage SEO settings have been configured. So go ahead and click the Save Changes button to make this live. And then you should get a notification that the settings have been saved. And there we go, nice work. All right, moving on. Next, I'm gonna show you how to diversify your navigation menus by adding what this theme calls an alt sidebar, short for alternative sidebar. This is yet another way to showcase your content and create a unique user experience for your blog's visitors. And let me show you what I mean. So if you click on this three-lined icon, which is commonly referred to as a hamburger icon, it will open up your alt sidebar. And an additional and interactive sidebar will appear from the left-hand side of your screen. You'll have the option to add various different widgets within the sidebar, but again, it's just another way to diversify your content and add a unique feature to your blog. So back at your blog, to add this feature, you'll want to access your customization menu. Then open the widgets tab and select the sidebar alt tab. Then from there, you're going to build the sidebar and start to add new widgets. And the first thing I'm going to add is an image of my free ebook. So click the Add a Widget button and select the Image Widget. And this is just like your initial sidebar, you'll give each one a title. So I'll title this Download My Free Ebook. And then I'll add an image of the ebook. And 
Then after we have the image, you'll want to add a custom link. So if you look towards the right of your screen and find the attachment display settings in that URL field, I'm going to add the URL of my ebook landing page. So now that if someone clicks on the image in the alt sidebar, they'll be taken to the landing page where I can potentially collect their email address. Then you also have the ability to change the size of the image here within this drop down. So I'm going to select full size. There we go. And let's add this to the widget. Boom, check that out. Yet another way to generate traffic to your lead magnet. Nice. All right, next I wanna add a search bar. So let's add a widget and then find the search widget. There we go. Giving your audience an easy way to search and navigate your blog is good for the overall user experience. Next, I'm gonna add a categories widget. This will let you display your blog's active categories. Now keep in mind that the only categories that are associated with a blog post will show up here. So if you have categories that haven't been associated to a post, they won't show up yet. And the final widget I'm gonna add is the recent posts with thumbnail widget. And if you recall earlier in the video, we installed this plugin during our WordPress setup. Either way, this plugin and widget will give us the ability to display specific posts with their thumbnails in our sidebar. So after you add the widget, you'll notice that it kind of looks overwhelming. No worries though, we're only gonna configure a few things for this sidebar. Okay, so the first is the title and I'll just call this recent posts. Then it starts you off by showing five posts, but I'm gonna change this to three. Let's take a look at this real quick. Looks great. Now, what if you wanna change the size of the thumbnail? I'll just scroll down to the size of thumbnail section and select your desired dimension. I like the box, so I'll select 75 by 75 pixels. And then if we open the alt sidebar again and scroll down, our thumbnails are more of a boxed shape. Looks good. All right, so let's publish our changes. And we'll exit out of here and let's check out our alt sidebar. And voila, looks really good. I love this feature because it's typically something you have to pay for. Plus it allows you to easily diversify your content and present a unique user experience. Awesome. All right, moving on next, let's configure the footer. All right, so now it's time to customize the footer. And this theme gives you a few options when it comes to how you want the content to be displayed along the footer. So let's fast forward real quick and take a look at the finished product. And as you can see, we're going to design the footer so that it displays a small about me blurb, the categories of our blog, and our recent posts. The footer is a great place to encourage engagement on your blog, and that's because once someone scrolls down to the bottom of your homepage, if there isn't anything to attract a click, chances are they'll bounce. So by having a footer that has clickable links and media, it will help keep visitors on your blog and interacting with your content. All right, so let's customize the footer. So to make our changes, we'll do so through the customization menu. So click customize at the top of the screen. And then open the widgets tab. Then select footer widget. And this is where we'll add the various widgets that we wanna use within the footer. So go ahead and click the add a widget button. And the first one we're going to add is recent posts. So select the recent posts with thumbnail widget. And this is the exact same process as whenever we added it to our alt sidebar. So first things first, I'll give it a title and we'll title this recent posts. There we go. Then I'll change the number of posts to show from five to three. So it'll only show three posts. Then if you wanna change the size of the thumbnail being used, just scroll down until you find the size of thumbnail dropdown. 
And I know there's a lot going on in this widget, so it might be hard to find, but just look for the size of thumbnail drop down and then choose the size you want to use. And there's our first footer widget. Looks great. Okay, let's add our next widget. And this is going to display our blog's categories. So follow the same steps as before to add a new widget. So click the Add a Widget button and click on Categories. And then you'll have the option to change how they're displayed, but I like the default settings as is. Looks really clean and professional in my opinion. And then finally, I wanna add our About Me blurb to our footer. So once again, click the Add a Widget button and then find the WDV About Me widget. Then the steps to configure this are pretty similar to when we added it to the sidebar, but for the footer, I'm just adding an image, title, and a short bio. So in the title field, I'm gonna call this About Me. Next, let's add the image. So click the Select Image button, and then find the image you wanna use. I'm using the same one as before, so it's already in our media library, and I'll just select it, and then click the Insert into Post button, and there we go. Then I'm keeping the image size as is, but I will decrease the border radius from 10 to zero. This removes the round edges and makes it more of a rectangular shape. You don't have to do this, but I'd like the image to match the rest of the site. Okay, next we'll want to create the bio, so scroll down and find the bio section where you'll enter your name, profession, and description. So let me do that really quick. And there we go, looks great. So like I said, that's all I'm including for the footer, so these widgets are good to go. All right, so let's go ahead and scroll up and save our changes by clicking the publish button. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is edit the footer credits. If you look at the very bottom of the footer, you'll see that the theme has some default footer credits displaying. I'm gonna show you how to add your own brand to them and also remove the default credits here as well. So let's go back a few slides and click that arrow button twice. And then open the page footer tab. And this will give you the ability to do things like add a logo to your footer, as well as show the social icons and scroll top button. But what we're concerned with is the copyright text. In this box is where you can add your own copyright to the footer, essentially legally protecting your content. And I've made it super easy to edit. Just head over to the code cheat sheet and find the footer copyright section. Simply highlight that code, copy it, and then head back to the widget and paste it within the content block. And there we go. And then all you're going to do is swap out the lifestyle WP blog text with the name of your blog. Then the dollar sign year and copy code will automatically update the year and add the copyright symbol after your blog's title within the footer. And like I said, this protects your content legally and adds a professional touch to your footer. Next, by default, the footer will display your theme's credits. You can keep it as is, but here's how to remove it if you want to. So head back a slide in the customization menu and open the additional CSS widget. Then from here, we're going to paste some CSS code from our CSS code cheat sheet. So go ahead and head back to your cheat sheet and find the remove footer credits section and highlight that code and copy it. Again, I'm on a Mac, so I'm pressing Command-C on my keyboard to copy it. And then head back to the blog and within the additional CSS widget, paste that code and check that out. The theme credits have been removed. Then there's one more final housekeeping thing that I like to do within this footer, and that's remove the footer break in between the credits and privacy policy. Now it's hard to see right now due to the customization menu, but trust me, it looks a lot better when we remove it. So first things first, head back to the code cheat sheet 
and find the remove footer break section, then highlight and copy that code, then head back to the additional CSS widget and paste the code like so. Now you can't really see the change, but if we publish this really quick, you can see that we've cleaned up the footer. So go ahead and click the publish button. And then let's exit out of here really quick. And I gotta say, Lifestyle Blog is really starting to come together. It's looking great. All right, so if we scroll down to the bottom of the blog, you can see that we now have our footer widgets in place, as well as a professional looking copyright text with our privacy policy menu item. And then in between the two, the break has been removed. So everything looks even and fantastic. Love it. Okay, moving on. Now the real fun begins. It's time to monetize your blog by adding multiple revenue streams. So this is my favorite part, monetizing your blog. And the way we're gonna earn revenue with the blog is through affiliate marketing. And just a heads up, some of the footage from this section of the video will be from my previous How to Start a Lifestyle blog tutorial, but I can assure you that the steps to implement the affiliate marketing revenue streams are the exact same, regardless of when you're watching this video. But just wanted to let you know before we move on. Now, there are multiple ways to earn money with a blog, but affiliate marketing is my main source of revenue for all of my blogs and has allowed me to earn tens of thousands of dollars of passive income online. Now, if you're brand new to affiliate marketing, no worries, I'm gonna break it down for you in a few seconds. But first, if we fast forward real quick, you can see a quick example of what we're going to be making. So what you're looking at right now is display advertising using affiliate campaigns within the sidebar. Again, affiliate marketing is one of the most profitable marketing strategies, and this theme sidebar offers some premier advertising space within your blog. Now, since I'm gonna be showing you how to implement affiliate marketing campaigns, you'll need to disclose to your audience that they're clicking on an affiliate link. So in addition to your affiliate offers within your sidebar, I'm gonna show you how to add an affiliate disclaimer as well. This will not only protect you legally, but it allows you to be transparent with your audience, which is always a good thing. This ultimately leads to more conversions because you're building trust with your audience by being honest. Now, before we get started, I wanna give you a quick rundown on how affiliate marketing works. So it's pretty basic, but here's the gist. Step one is you sign up for a reputable company's affiliate program like DSW and recommend relevant affiliate offers, AKA products to your audience. Step two is to use affiliate links within your content. And this can be in blog posts, your sidebar, etc. Step three, when someone clicks on your affiliate link and makes a purchase, that leads to the final step, you getting paid. And I know it sounds simple, but that's because the idea behind it is. All you need to do is set up the funnel and drive traffic to your affiliate links. So let me show you a few ways you can start setting up affiliate revenue streams on your blog. Okay, getting started with affiliate marketing is a pretty straightforward process. One way is to go directly to the company you wanna partner with and fill out their affiliate program application. You can typically do this by going to the footer of a company's homepage and finding the affiliate link, or just doing a quick Google search of the company's affiliate program. And for this example, I'm using the DSW affiliate program. And as you can see, it takes you to their affiliate application. Now, I'm not gonna go through the entire application process, but this will give you an idea of what you'll need to do in order to become an affiliate for a company by going directly to their website. And once you're at their affiliate page, They'll typically walk you through the application process. And then once you fill out the application and hopefully are approved, you can start earning money with your blog through their affiliate program. Another affiliate marketing strategy is to join an affiliate network. And affiliate networks are great because they offer a platform that allows merchants and publishers to discover one another. And if you're new to the concept, merchants are companies that offer affiliate programs and publishers are affiliate marketers who promote these companies on their sites. Now, affiliate marketing can be a very lucrative strategy when it's done right, and lifestyle blogging offers some of the most reliable and high converting affiliate networks around. For example, CJ Affiliate is one of the biggest and most popular affiliate networks out there. They give you the tools, data, opportunities, and guidance to grow your brand and extend your reach across a variety of platforms. They're a great resource for affiliates and they offer partnerships with thousands of companies that can help you earn money by promoting products on your blog. 
Then there's also Reward Style, which is now rebranded and is called LTK. And with over 100 million in retail sales, this ready to shop inspiration hails followers from top global influencers and is another great revenue stream for lifestyle bloggers as well. Additionally, they partner with reputable companies, which in turn is good for affiliate marketers because that gives us an opportunity to partner with great companies and promote products that are actually in demand. Finally, there's Share a Sale. And Share a Sale is another one of my top recommended affiliate networks for a few reasons. For starters, they've been around for almost 20 years. They also have an amazing customer support team that will allow you to talk to an actual human being if you have an issue or need some help with your account. And additionally, they partner with reputable companies, which in turn is good for affiliate marketers because that gives us the opportunity to partner with great companies and promote products that are actually in demand. Okay, so after you've joined your affiliate networks and found a product to promote, you'll be given a unique affiliate link. And the affiliate link is the most important aspect of this process because this is how you will track who uses that link and it's how the company can tell if someone makes a purchase through your link which in turn leads to you getting paid. And each affiliate network and program are different, but they will have a unique affiliate link designated just for you so that you can get paid. And just a quick example of what that looks like, if we go to my share a sale account, which is what you're looking at right now, I'm an affiliate for Optin Monster. And within my account under the link section, I can easily access my unique affiliate link for this particular product. Then the strategy is to add this link to my blog so that I can direct traffic to this product. And then if someone makes a purchase through my affiliate link, I get paid. So let me show you a few quick ways to implement affiliate marketing revenue streams on your blog. The first is through the use of the affiliate link. So for this example, let's say that I've been approved to be an affiliate for DSW and I have an affiliate link for some of their shoes. So one way to promote traffic to that is to add an image in the sidebar that links to the product page through my affiliate link. This is super easy to implement and is a great way to drive traffic to your affiliate offers. So to achieve this, go to the customization menu, and open the widget tab, And then we're going to be updating the right sidebar. So open the right sidebar tab. And we're going to add a new widget. And we want to add the image widget. Then I'm simply uploading an image of the product. And typically whenever you become an affiliate for a company, they'll provide you with all these different types of resources like images of their products for you to promote. Then within the attachment display settings, I'm going to add the affiliate link from DSW to the URL field. And I'll also set the size to full size. It's just a personal preference. And there we go. Then click the add to widget button. Then don't forget to title this section. And I'll just call this shop. And there it is. And then whenever we click on the image, the visitor will be taken to your affiliate offer. Now let's say this particular affiliate offer pays you 10% of the sale for each paying customer you refer. And let's also say this product is around $300. That means you'll earn $30 for each sale. That doesn't seem like a lot, but once you start building traffic to your blog and you get 100 people to make a purchase through your affiliate link, that's $3,000 from one affiliate product. And that's just one product. You could potentially do this with multiple products. That's why I love affiliate marketing so much. Okay, moving on to another affiliate marketing strategy, and that's with Amazon Associates. Amazon is the most used e-commerce platform in the world, and it presents a great opportunity for you to add additional revenue streams to your blog. Amazon Associates is the affiliate program for Amazon. It's free to join, and all you need to do is sign up for a free standard Amazon account, and then apply to the Amazon Associates affiliate program. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that all affiliate programs will wanna see that you have a professional digital platform in place to promote their products. So you'll wanna have launched your blog before you sign up for any of these programs. However, once you have your blog up and running, Amazon Associates offers a ton of great resources for you to earn a passive income online. Now, I'm not gonna go into a deep dive of the Amazon Associates platform in this video, 
But I do have a paid course called the Affiliate Blogger Academy where I go into much greater detail on the Amazon Associates program as well as my affiliate marketing strategy as a whole. You can learn more about that course by visiting the link in the video description below titled Affiliate Blogger Academy. All right, so after you're approved to be an Amazon Associate, here's one quick way to get started with affiliate marketing. So Amazon recently rolled out a new feature for their affiliates called the Site Stripe tool that allows you to quickly create an affiliate link for any product. This is great because it adds a widget, so to speak, at the top of your Amazon account where you can literally browse the millions of products in Amazon's catalog and create affiliate links for each specific product. So to access it within the back end of your Amazon Associates dashboard, hover your mouse over Tools and click on Site Stripe. And that'll take you to the setup page, which is what you're looking at right now. Then to enable it, simply click the Learn More link and that will open the settings. Then under the display settings, flip that display status switch on and that will enable the Site Stripe tool. Then once enabled, you can create affiliate links and banner ads for any product on Amazon using this little tool. For example, let's say I wanna promote some Apple AirPods. So back at Amazon, I'll search for them like I would if I were shopping on amazon.com. And then let's choose these. They seem to be from the official Apple Amazon store and they're a decent price point. Then at the product page, I'm gonna create a banner ad of this product to display in our blog sidebar. So within the site stripe tool at the top of the screen where it says get link, select text plus image. And then this gives you the ability to create a banner ad. This is essentially a product ad that you can configure and embed within your content. And I'm gonna leave the default settings in place, but then all you gotta do is copy that embed code. And I'm on a Mac, so I'm pressing Command-C on my keyboard to copy it. Then back at the blog, we're gonna add another custom HTML widget. So once again, click the Add a Widget button within the customization menu. And then find the custom HTML widget. Now before you add the Amazon HTML, I want you to add a center opening and closing tag within the HTML widget. This will center your Amazon ad and make it look uniform within your sidebar. Then in between the center tags, paste the HTML that you just copied from Amazon and boom. We now have a professional looking Amazon ad running on our site that is directing traffic to your affiliate offer. Another thing to point out is that Amazon pays 3% commission on headphone sales. So these are around $144, and that means you'd get almost $5 per sale. And once you start building up traffic to your site, if you make 200 sales, that's close to $1,000 from just this affiliate offer. There's a ton of potential with Amazon Associates, and their strong brand can help you increase your conversions. Okay, and you can give this a title if you want. I'm just going to title this Deals. And looking good. I like it. Next, it's time to add our affiliate disclaimer to the sidebar. And real quick, I wanna clarify that the following information that we're about to cover should not be perceived as legal advice. I am not a lawyer, obviously, and by no means should this tutorial be used as any type of legal consultation. I recommend that you reach out to a legal professional if you have any questions or concerns when it comes to how to move forward with your affiliate disclosure. With that being said, an affiliate disclosure will not only protect you legally, but it ensures that you're following FTC guidelines. But more importantly, it allows you to be transparent with your audience, which is always a good thing. This ultimately leads to more conversions because you're building trust with your audience by being honest. So to add the disclaimer, we'll be adding another custom HTML widget. So click the add a widget button and then find the custom HTML widget. And then let's give this a title. So I'm gonna use affiliate disclaimer as the title and then add your disclaimer in the content section. And if you need help formulating an affiliate disclaimer, you can copy this one. Or you can check out the link in the show notes titled Affiliate Disclaimer Template, where you can access a template designed to help you create your own disclaimer. So let's publish our changes. And then exit out of the customization menu. And if we scroll down a bit to our sidebar, you can see that you have officially monetized your blog with affiliate marketing. 
These are all great monetization strategies that can optimize your conversions and potentially increase your revenue. Plus, it looks really professional. These types of ads add credibility, in my opinion, because it shows visitors that these brands want to be associated with you and they trust you enough to promote their products. So win-win. All right, moving on. So we have a few SEO house cleaning tasks to take care of, and then we could launch your blog. All right, we're almost there. Your blog is a few minutes away from launching. But before we finish up, there are a few tips that I wanna share with you. The first has to do with SEO. By default, WordPress used to hide your blog from the search engines. Now, I don't think they do that anymore, but it never hurts to check. So let's do that really quick. All right, so now that you have a search engine friendly blog that is structured correctly and has content, you're ready for the search engine bots to crawl your site. So one way to let the search engines know that your blog is ready can be configured in your WordPress dashboard. So head to your WordPress dashboard if you're not there already. And then on the left hand side of the screen, hover your mouse over settings and click on reading. Then towards the very bottom of the reading settings, you'll see an option for the search engine visibility. And like I said, by default, WordPress used to discourage search engines from indexing your blog. So to encourage them to crawl and index your site, simply uncheck that box and click the Save Changes button. Now, I should mention that this doesn't guarantee that your blog will be indexed by the search engines. In order to be 100% sure your site will be indexed, you'll need to submit a sitemap to all the major search engines in order for your blog to be properly indexed. Locally, the Yoast SEO plugin takes care of a lot of the heavy lifting and automatically creates an XML sitemap for you and your site. And if you're unfamiliar with what a sitemap is, it's basically an easy way for you to inform search engines about pages on your site that are available for crawling. A sitemap is a file where you can list the web pages of your site to tell Google and other search engines about the organization of your site's content. Search engine web crawlers like Googlebot read this file to then crawl your blog. All right, with that being said, let's access your sitemap. And one of the quickest ways to do that is within the Yoast SEO plugin. So if you're at your WordPress dashboard, hover your mouse over Yoast SEO and click on General, and this will take you to the Yoast SEO General Settings page. Then from here, click on the Features tab. And all you're gonna do here is just make sure that the sitemap lever is switched on, and it is. Another useful tip is to check and make sure the sitemap is configured correctly. So we'll need to access the sitemap first. And in order to do that, next to where it says XML sitemaps, click on that little question mark icon there. And then click on the see the XML sitemap link. And this will take you to your sitemap. Now I know it doesn't look like much, but trust me, this is very important to your blog. The next, we want to check the validity of the sitemap. So go ahead and copy the URL of the sitemap in your browser. I'm on a Mac, so I'm pressing Command-C on my keyboard. And then go to xml-sitemaps.com. And I'll put a link to this tool within the important links doc in the video description below. And then once you're at the site, click on the SEO tool menu item. And then click the Validate XML Sitemap link. Then simply paste the sitemap URL in the field provided, click the Validate Sitemap button, and the tool will check if your sitemap is formatted correctly. And it is. No issues detected. Perfect. Now remember what I was saying, this doesn't automatically guarantee that your blog will be on the search engine results. You still have to submit the sitemap to the search engines. And this process will vary depending on which search engine you're submitting this to, but the most common search engine is by far Google. And the way to notify Google is through the Google Search Console, which is what you're looking at right now. And I'm not gonna walk you through the entire process in this video, but all you need to do is sign up for a free Google Search Console account, verify your site, and submit your sitemap. It's a fairly straightforward process, and I actually have a video that walks you through that process that you can access in the show notes titled Verify Your Site with Search Console. And you can also find the tutorial on my YouTube channel as well. So what you're looking at right now is the dashboard of Google Search Console. And depending on when you're viewing this video, some things may have changed. But after you've signed up for Google Search Console and you have verified your site with Google, this is how you would submit your sitemap. So within the Google Search Console dashboard, 
you'd click on the Sitemaps tab on the left-hand side of the screen. Then where it says Add a new Sitemap, simply paste the URL that we copied from Yoast a few moments ago and click the Submit button. And this will ping Google and let their search engine bots know that your site is ready to be crawled. And I'll put a link in the important link doc within the show notes that will take you to the Google Search Console sign up portal so that whenever you're ready to launch, you can get that process started. All right, moving on to the last step. It's time to launch your WordPress blog. And here we are. It's finally time to launch your blog. This is it, the moment you've been waiting for. It's time to show the world what you've been working on and it's time for you to shine. So, if you remember, Bluehost displays a coming soon page in place of your blog. But now that you're ready to launch, it's time to lift the curtain, remove the coming soon page, and showcase your hard work. So, to officially launch, Click the Coming Soon Active button at the top of your screen in the toolbar. And this should bring you to your Bluehost dashboard. Then from here, you'll want to open the settings. And then under the Site Controls section, turn the Coming Soon page off. And that's it. Congratulations, your blog is now live. And just for good measure, when we visit our site, you can see that the coming soon active notification is no longer showing. And now when people visit your blog's domain, they will see this beautiful work of digital art that you have put your heart and soul into. And again, I can't thank you enough for allowing me to be a part of this journey, but it's only just the beginning. Now it's time for you to create blog content and implement the lessons that you've learned in this video to begin to grow your brand, your audience, and revenue. And I wish you the best of luck with your new blog. And please don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions or need some additional assistance with your blog. I'm always happy to help. So that's gonna do it for this video. If you found it helpful, I'd greatly appreciate it if you would like, comment, share, and subscribe to the Blog With Ben YouTube channel. Also, now that you've started your blog, Check out these two videos on email marketing and blog monetization. They'll help you grow your audience and earn a passive income with your blog. And as always, your support means a great deal to me and my family. And for that, I thank you. So with that being said, I'll see you in the next video. And thanks for watching.